What's going on, everyone? Welcome back again to another stream. Assuming I'm actually live right now, because, again... Oh! Okay, it takes a little bit before it actually catches up on my end. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you all. Welcome to another stream. I've been doing these, for those of you wondering. Every week on Friday, right here on YouTube, obviously, normally I stream on Twitch. Today, I am taking on the StarCraft Master Challenge. Which is a micro challenge to become a true StarCraft master. I've completed this some time ago. So, well, I say some time ago. In StarCraft terms, some time ago. When it first came out... And I just looked this up. Back in 2012. <laughs> it's been an incredibly long time since this released. However... I obviously have not done it yet on the YouTube Nerd account, right? The account that I got started with a couple of weeks ago, because that's the account I started uh, the latter games on when I streamed on YouTube. We made it to Masters 1, by the way, last week. That was a lot of fun. Um, however, I noticed that there are a bunch of achievements for this particular arcade game that Blizzard made. And I don't even have them all on my main account. So I don't really remember... Yeah, doing them specifically for the achievements, but there are quite a few of them. So, complete all 30 rounds in StarCraft Master. That's the first one I want to try and get today. Then there is Safe Zone. Complete round 8 in StarCraft Master without losing any Stalkers. Round 9 in under 45 seconds. Round 24 without losing any Stalkers. And I think then there's also a couple that allow you to like... Yeah, yeah, there's, there's like a couple that are underneath the StarCraft Master achievement. So there's a StarCraft Pupil, StarCraft Expert, StarCraft Apprentice. The goal for today is to hopefully complete all of them. Maybe. I'm gonna try. Anyways, I've got myself some, uh, some coffee. Uh, I'm ready to take on the challenge. Is everything looking good, by the way? Are we alright? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, they introduced anniversary achievements as well when StarCraft II turned 10 years old, but that was specifically for the campaign. So if you want to play these, you have to go to Custom, then to Arcade, and then just search... Well, it's called StarCraft Master, but if you search Master, it'll show up. And as far as, like, the creator goes, it shows the official Blizzard logo. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, so these are 30 micro-challenges. To become a true StarCraft master is what it says. Now, I tested this very briefly. Hey, what's going on? Welcome, Falcon. Appreciate you. Uh, I tested this really briefly this morning to see if it still works. Because obviously when they first introduced this, the balance of the game was quite a bit different. And I was wondering like, if it takes into account the cur current balance patch or, or the old ones or however it works. So, I tested one of the Infestor challenges, and all I needed to see was that I could spawn an Infestor Terran. Because I was gonna say it was gonna, gonna be kind of tricky if I have to somehow complete a challenge. And rather than the Infestor Terran, I have a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of Infestors that just kind of sit around doing nothing, creating nice little orange clouds. Might not necessarily be ideal. Uh, if I go through it quite smoothly, which I doubt, but if that ends up happening... I also want to do a quick review of the Team Liquid map contest maps. I haven't looked at those just yet, but they just announced the finalists, like, this morning. So, those are likely going to be future maps that will be introduced to the multiplayer version of the game at some point as well. So, um, not entirely sure how long this is all going to take, but that's kind of the beauty of live streaming. We'll wing it as we go. It's good on Jordan. Thank you as well for your support. Welcome. Good to have you back. Actually, is that a welcome back? I'm not even entirely sure. But Look, I've been following you for a long time. I finally remembered that I'm not subscribed. Ay, 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 ay. This is why YouTubers ask you over and over and over and over again. Not because we're trying to be obnoxious, but because, you know, a lot of people watch a lot of videos but just don't realize they can subscribe. <laughs> It's okay. If I, if I look at my YouTube analytics, I think like half my viewers are subscribed to the channel. And the other half aren't. Um, so, you know. If everyone, everybody, we would probably be at like a million subs. That'd be pretty sick. Not that it really makes much of a difference, but it'd be great for my ego. And isn't that why I stream in the first place? Okay, no, no. 
No, no, wait, hold up. Uh, I did make a thumbnail for today's live stream too. It is not as creepy as the last ones. Let me let me have a quick little peek. I wasn't entirely sure what to make for today, but there it is. This one isn't too terrible, right? Like this week, okay, last week's one apparently was a bit scary. I don't see why, but this week's one is not as terrifying. This is quite le me, by the way, for the, quite literally me, for, for those of you wondering. A new subscriber has been acquired. Whenever a YouTuber makes a thumbnail, we quite literally just sit here like this. We just like make little video recordings of us making dumb faces and then we take screenshots of those faces and edit them into the thumb. That's what we do. This is just a secret behind the scenes look. So I literally quite literally sat here this morning like... Like, like someone... It's cr But you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Hey, thank you very much, Shiny. Two months, welcome. And thank you also, John Person, with the $5 tip. He says, this week's thumbnail is awesome. I actually recorded the video for tomorrow as well. You want to see the thumbnail for tomorrow's video? It's actually a very sick game. Or a best of three, actually. But this is for tomorrow's video. This is the first time I've ever seen anyone leave a game of StarCraft 2 while having 25,000 resources in the bank. And it's actually game over. <laughs> Pretty sick. I thought I was going to be there casting the game for at least another 20 minutes, but nope. It just... It was just over. Hey, what's going on, Jonathan? Ooh. Wait, so last time you donated... <laughs> Wait, Jonathan. You had a little bit of a mix-up with the previous stream? So Jonathan says, it's been a while. Last time I donated 44 US dollars, not 44 DKK. I think that's Danish crowns. Okay, so you meant to donate like four bucks and you accidentally donated 44? Thanks. I, uh, anyway, since you're donating again, I guess it wasn't, you know, wasn't the end of the world. <laughs> hmm. Anyways, anyways, anyways. We're gonna get started with StarCraft Master. Loading it up. This is, this is not an easy set of challenges. We're gonna try our best, but this is not gonna be easy. Oh, I thought there was gonna be voice acting. Greetings, Executor. In this simulation, we'll be presented with challenges. Know that few have come this far and none have succeeded. Mm, I don't know if that's true. Complete each challenge. Prove yourself a true master. All right. So, pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna get a challenge for each and every one of these, and we'll have to try and complete it. That's about it. Starts easy, but gets very tricky. Okay. The eye pistol. The real men drill deep. Alright then. Let's go down, Johnny. Those battle cruisers do tactical jump loco. Alright. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny. Welcome. All right, so the Marine double team against the Galactic Arbiters. Fair enough. So I think if I warp, I can go to any of the future ones as well if I can't, like, figure out one of them. But that's not an option. I, at the very least, so there's, like, a couple. I think there's three that have, like, additional challenges added to them. I want to at least try and complete every single one of them. That's, that's the goal. But ideally, I'd do everything. Um, oh, I can't close this? Okay, okay. Resetting round one. Here we go. Oh. I already broke the game. I didn't even get started yet. What's going on? Alexander. Hello, Loco. My name is Alexander. Don't forget to smile. It's 10 P-E-N, which is $2.51. Hey, thank you for doing the calculation for me already. Thank you, Alexander. Appreciate you. All right, let's go. Okay, so no stim pack on these. But, you know what? I could teach my mom to do this one, I'm pretty sure. Ah. We did it. Epic gamer moments. Right away. Okay, stalkers versus zealots. No blink or anything on these. I don't know if the Zealots have charge. Well, if they do have charge, it's the old version, I guess. I am the voice of 
Am I supposed to micro you guys individually? That's making it way harder than it needs to be, huh? Yeah, I should probably just play a ring around a Rosie like this. Okay. So there were two additional achievements for not losing any stalkers. I don't really know exactly which of the challenge numbers those were, but I think it's like rank 7 and then maybe rank 9 or level 9, whatever. I'm excelling at StarCraft 2 already. The Zealot Choke. It's not what you think it is, chat. Uh, okay, you go create a, a secondary layer over there, please. Are we okay? Yes, we most definitely are. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. It's already getting a little trickier, though. That was close. <laughs> Loco's choking. Look, if I didn't get it done, I would have just blamed the fact that I didn't finish my coffee yet, okay? <sighs> Alright. Yeah, I think I could have done it better if I went a little bit further into that choke. Hydralis off creep against a bunch of zealots. I don't know, am I supposed to target fire? Does it matter? It does not. Okay, okay. Don't even need the caffeine to be properly powered up. A 30 second timer has been activated. Okay. So, we just attack move? That's it? Okay, that was actually closer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> if I would have microed a little too far or not too quickly back, I, I would have made some trouble there. But Burrow Ambush. 90 second timer activated. Wait, what? Oh, okay. So they're going to be patrolling back and forth. I see. So I don't know when the timer begins. They're already patrolling. So I think I'm going to activate the timer right now. Yeah. Is that good? It's a very long timer, though. Okay. Okay. Wait, Harstam did this challenge at some point and lost to the spine crawler? <laughs> did he really? <laughs> to be fair, the margin for error is kind of small, but. Colossus Smash. Oh. I think I have to target fire. Colossus has a lot of health, though. Okay. Feels good to be a Protoss player. Barely took any actual life. My Colossus over here is already an executor. I think it must have been round 9, by the way, to not lose any Stalkers. Or maybe this one. So let's have a let's have a quick look. Round eight. Okay, so complete a round eight in StarCraft Master without losing any stalkers. Uh I have blink. Mm. 
No, that ain't it. That ain't it. So there is a minimum range. I think what I should do is blink on top of one of them, snipe it, and then blink on top of the other one. Because siege tanks can only fire... Yeah, 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 that must be it. That must be it. Good. Good, 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 good. That should get me an extra achievement. It didn't pop up. Maybe it only pops up after you actually... Oh, no. It popped up just now. I think it just popped up, but it, it like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just popped up, but apparently we were right in the transition thing. All right, fair enough. whack -a roach so this one also has a timer. What does it attack now? Oh, I have to... I have... Okay, I have to also kill the Marines. <laughs> ah, I see, I see, I see, I see. Don't know why I expected the Marines to somehow not be a problem. Okay, no, no, no. I do definitely have to burrow them. Wait, are you... Are you sure? Complete round nine in under 45 seconds. Under 45 seconds? Okay, I guess? But now it immediately started targeting down the other roach again. Now they do heal probably... Yeah, they do heal pretty quickly on the ground. So I guess I need to keep them burrowed for a bit longer? Hmm. Alright, alright, alright. That's good, I guess? How long do we let him burrow, though? Because I have to finish this one pretty quick. Oh, no. So, you can keep him burrowed for a long time and let him heal, but then I don't get the other achievement. Okay, we can just try and get the, the challenge first and then go from there. We'll refine it after that. So we have one minute and ten seconds, right? And we had to do it in 45 seconds. What? We had one minute and ten seconds, we have to do it in 45. So we have 25 seconds on the clock. Math. On YouTube during a live stream. Very dangerous. I probably got it wrong. Probably got it wrong, let's be real. Oh, come on. I press the button, but they actually don't burrow immediately, so it's a little bit of a meme. Okay. We just have to keep them burrowed. I have to burrow them sooner than you'd imagine. I think what we actually want to do is get the bunker to burning. Because then it will at the very least still take a bunch of damage while it's, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'd have to finish it now. That's dangerous, though. It's difficult to press a button. Look, I play Zork. We don't usually micro units. This is new to me, okay? Okay, so I did it, but I, yeah, I did not do it in the correct amount of time. No, 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 I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to the previous one. We gotta get Wacker Roach done. I wanna try and get it. I wanna try and get it burning before I. Hmm. 
Mm, that's not it. Okay, now it's burning. I don't think it takes a lot of damage though, but it definitely does add up. Okay, so this is faster, but not fast enough. What? It's so quick. I'm 10 seconds slow here. 10 seconds slow. Ooh, that's a lot. How am I ever gonna... Okay. Loco get good. Ah, you can definitely make suggestions if you want to. Sure. That's one of the advantages of live streaming. We can... Uh, if chat can't figure it out, I mean, who could? Can you stutter step or can you burrow between shots? No, 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 no. That's too many uh, animations. Oh my god. Yeah, no, that's not good. That's not good. I think I should probably start burrowing when they're like at orange health or something. Like close to red, but not quite there. Look up playthroughs on YouTube. Wait, I thought I was the playthrough. Hold up now. Okay. Okay. How much time do I need to kill the Marines? I don't know. This is good, this is good, this is real good. That sound is the achievement sound, that's all we need to hear. That's all we truly need. Ramp control? Okay, this is round 10. What am I supposed to do? Oh, I think I'm supposed to slice them in half. <laughs> like this doesn't do anything for me. I see, I see, I see. Uh, okay, alright, alright, I see. I'm supposed to take down the Zerg units. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Do Zealots have Burrow too? Get him, Sentry! Okay, I have to target fire down with the zealots too, don't I? Oh, actually? Come on, sentry! Come on, sentry! Come on, sent- Sentry OP, man. Successfully tickled that roach to death. Storm and run. Uh... Okay. Run! Guys, I'm getting flashbacks to a decade ago. I... I believe... I, I recognize this one. I believe I took forever getting this challenge done. Because the Marines shuffle... When they... Uh, they shuffle around when... Hmm. I need three storms, but I only get two. The first storm was perfect there, but I cannot afford them to move out of position. Okay, 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 okay. Ah, all right, all right, all right. This one's to soften them up. This one is to finish the job. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, I got a storm in front of them, I guess. That feels wrong. But it's the right thing to do, I think. Two water balloons? No, 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 so this is the old, like, just to clarify, this High Templar has no attack. So, the, the, the High Templar has no attack, it does not have the water balloon thing that we have these days. This challenge came out a decade ago.
Is that it? That's it? That's it? That's it? That's it? Jimmy, what? I mean, I'm gonna get energy in 10 sec. No, no, no. How did Jimmy not get caught in that one? Storm does not stack. No, like, I can prove that to you as well. Like this, it, it does it doesn't stack. I mean you can't do it with one high templar that quickly, but stacking storms does not double the damage. That would be something special. We should stand against the darkness. Okay, good. Ooh! <laughs> I was just about to run out. Okay, okay, we did it. We did it. We did it. Jimmy had a raincoat on. Friendly fire. What? I guess I get. Oh no, I get an infested Terran! Infested Terrans. For the StarCraft Zoomers of the world that are not familiar with this ability, before the wonderful Microbial Shroud, the most powerful ability in all of StarCraft, uh, we had an, a beautiful thing called the infested Terran. Oh, I don't even have a hotkey for it. Okay, I'm gonna have to get a hotkey for it, because otherwise I don't think I can do much. Uh, I'm gonna switch to regular grid. Actually, no, I'm gonna need my uh, rapid fire as well, I think. Ah, we'll set that up later if I do need it. Anyways, um, the infested Terran, there it is. They removed this ability because it was kind of overpowered. They removed it after like nine or eight years, something like that. No one used that ability anyways. No, 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 no. Nobody ever used the Infested Terran, and yet it got removed. I know, crazy. Um... This is a puzzle game. Because I'm gonna have to clear out the siege tanks too. Huh? How am I gonna do the siege tanks too? So, it's 25 energy per infested Terran, so I have 8. Maybe 9 if I like start quickly enough? That was not good. Okay. So, I have enough right now for one more. Is that gonna kill it? What? I feel like I'm like three infested Terrans short. <laughs> Am I mistaken? <laughs> um... There is a timer in this mission too, so it's not like I could just wait until the timer runs, you know, or, or wait until my infester regenerates. I definitely have to use both of the siege tanks though, no? Yeah, for sure. That's a complete waste. I'm gonna have to get rid of the marines first. I definitely have to get rid of the... In yeah, yeah, yeah. I can unburrow. Yeah. So I could try that out. Take like one shot to the face. Maybe that's the solution. But I think I die right away. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot take a shot to the face. Look, I put them between the marines and the tanks. Okay, I'll show you what happens if I put them between the marines and the tanks. I don't think anything happens. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think that does anything. I'm gonna have to be pretty fast. Okay.
Huh? So it ends right away as well if I run out of energy to cast one of those things. So what if I wait five seconds? So what if I spawn all eight of them right away? Do I still get another one? Like, do I still... Interesting. I don't have fungal growth, right? It's literally just the infester. Fungal growth would be... Oh, I do have fungal growth, actually. Oh, you know what? I do have fungal growth. Yeah, the problem is, even if I get rid of the siege tanks, I'm still gonna have to kill, like, five or ten, like that. There's no neural parasite for me. So that makes this a little tricky. He's getting it? That went way worse than the previous attempts, my man. Loco's getting it. I I don't think I'm getting it. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think we have to kill the marines first. And then hopefully by the time that the Siege tanks are the only things left over. I will be able to keep like one more like one infested Terran that will actually spawn and then get the final hit on the second siege tank. I think that's probably what we should do. Yeah, I think so. No, I don't think we can unburrow next to the tank because we die immediately. One thing I've noticed from streaming on YouTube. And I remember this being the thing as well on Twitch. This is completely besides uh, this challenge. But I've noticed on YouTube it's quite common to literally take your message and then copy paste it over and 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 over again in the chat. <laughs> it's like someone writes a message that hit like control A, control Z, enter, control V, enter, control V, enter, control. <laughs> Guys, please don't do that. It kind of. It kind of ruins the chat experience for everybody else. I mean, I could put on slow mode, but I don't think that's particularly great. Yeah, maybe I need to add a, a, a chat bot or something along those lines. <laughs> okay, I guess I kind of baited this one, huh? Yeah, okay. I take full responsibility for the current spam. <laughs> all right, all right. This one's tricky. I don't know what the way, what, what the way of getting this one done is. No, I have to do it one at a time, I think. A new subscriber has been hey, what's going on, Nullset? Thank you so much. Two months. I need to maximize the amount of splash damage that the siege tanks do. Problem is, I've done this already exactly like this. Okay. Can you walk over there? <gasps> Ooh, that was... Ooh, okay. I don't know if that one infested Terran would have enough damage to finish off the tank by itself. But that could be good. I gotta time the siege tank shots though, because I, I, if I spam it, the siege tanks are not gonna be able to fire again already. Okay. Fire again. Yeah. A new 
Yo, that was so close. Okay, yeah. So you have to time the siege tank shots. I think that was my mistake. The siege tank shots... Um, if you spam them too quickly, the siege tanks don't fire as frequently as they can. Because then the marines already finish off the eggs. That was very close. Thank you very much, Mikola. Thank you for the, the tier 1 subscription. Welcome. Can't believe I got that challenge done on the first try. Didn't even have to do it a couple times. Amazing. Anyways, um, I'm the Protals. I am the Protals. Hold position while my Zealots are already surrounded. Oh, I think this is just to buy time. Oh, jeez. Um... Why don't we just build a better wool in the first place, rather than whatever is going on in this game? <laughs> this makes no sense. Why did this happen anyways? <laughs> like, don't build your, your gateway, your forge over in the main. Build it as a wool off at the front. Anyway, I think I gotta hug the Photon Cannon. Okay. Well then. If the Zerk is really silly and they're not paying attention at all, this would indeed work in a game. I think? That was not a flawless wall. Prop micro. Oh, at least four workers have to survive. Oh, hold up. Okay. I didn't realize that four workers have to survive. <sighs> Step out of the way, sir. Okay, I'm joining in with the probes. Now there's two of them I can attack at the same time. Oh, no. I still dead. Still dead. Still dead. Still dead. No, no, if, as soon as you... Okay, so there's like two different modes, right? Uh, when it comes to... Probes. So, basically, probes can be... Like, there's like attack priorities in a game of StarCraft. And when workers are mining, they have a lower priority to be attacked than, for example, a photon cannon. And the same goes for when you put them on hold position. However, as soon as you change the probes to attacking, they are going to be at the same attack priority as photon cannons. So, that's basically it. Here we go, here we go. We gotta get the perfect surround. Get out of the way! Everyone hold! Why are you guys moving? Ah, yeah. Micro God, Micro God Loco, here coming up. Hold position is difficult for these probes, man. They weren't taught that in probe school. Don't move! Stop it! No! You move! Don't move! Don't move! Don't move! Don't move! Stop moving! Stop! Okay. All right. All right. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good now. We're good now. <laughs> the real solution to that problem was not allowing the Zerklings into the base in the first place, but... Force field surround. Defeat the enemy units. Okay. <laughs> um Panic So these force fields are gonna run out. Yeah, that wasn't it. 
Yeah, this ain't it. I think? No. Ooh, hero sentry, come on! You did it before! Look, I'm currently more invested in this 10-year-old challenge than I am in my engineering degree. That's okay. That's okay, man. Don't worry. Half of my Twitch chat are engineers, and I would imagine that on YouTube it's... Uh it's probably about the same, actually. I would imagine that probably about half of my YouTube viewers over the age of 25 are engineers. So if you have any questions whatsoever, you can probably ask it in the chat right here. They will explain it right away. Should be pretty self-explanatory. All right. Stalker, start firing. Okay, I actually had to stop command the stalkers there. Oh no, I lost the sentries. No, this is way worse. Loco falls. I'm in fact a rocket scientist. I thought you were an astronaut, Icarius. Not an astronaut? Mm. Zealots! No, no, no. If the zealots get adventurous, we gotta hold position them right away. No, 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 no. <laughs> What's that one doing there, Loco? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know what that one was. No, no. Rocket science is like elite level engineering. Yeah. It's like Grandmaster. And. Oh God. Grandmaster engineering. Is this good? Didn't look terrible. I think it's pretty bad, isn't it? I feel like with this one, you basically just YOLO and then you hope for the best. I I, I think that's the... <laughs> Loco, I engineered my son. Very impressive, Dante. Must have been a difficult task. Um, Aren't you the one that wrote the Inferno? Or is it, no, okay, anyways, um, I think I have to hold position and then just force fuel around my units, okay? Sorry, Zealot. Love you, though. This was good. This was real good. Dude, Proto so OP. There it is. YOLO sounds like a very technical term. It is. Do people still use the words YOLO in 2022? Or is this like a boomer moment of me? My favorite use of YOLO is like using it in like... The exact opposite of where people mostly use it, right? It's like, for example, I always wear a seatbelt because YOLO. Which I think is really funny. Anyways, kids have told this too did not think it was so funny. Boomer moment for sure, Loco. Yeah, yeah. Loco, how old are you? A boomer. That's all you need to know. I'm turning 30 next week. I just realized it's next week. Like, next week, Saturday? I'm officially three decades old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do I do? Defeat the enemy units. Gotcha. I have a couple high Templar, so I guess I have feedback sentries. Uh, so now what do we do? Was I supposed to feedback before those? No way. What? How in the world am I supposed to force field that? Or, sorry. Oh, I can morph in an Archon. Ar 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 <laughs> in my defense, I've only known of StarCraft's existence for about two thirds of my life, okay? Did you guys know you can make High Templar more, like, merge together, become as one to a unit called an Archon? Did you guys, have you guys ever heard of that? 
Yo, thank you very much, the worm superior. One dollar for each year of micro training. I'm only at 29 right now, man. Maybe next year I can get this challenge done in a heartbeat, but thank you very much. <sighs> hide in the back, hide in the back, hide in the back. I could actually push it through the force field already. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do. Do I need to, though? Glowy boy's pretty good! I could have used the zealots to push the arc on as it was mer like morphing in. It would have been uh, breaking the force fields a little sooner. Fungal death. Right, right, okay. Yeah, so fungal growth used to be an instant thing. Which is about as broken as you think it is. Oh god. What? Ha! Ah! Why is it called fungal death if I have to kill him with infested Terran? Yeah, so it it like it got nerfed about 17 times over the years. Fungal growth in the current version of StarCraft 2 would be very broken in this, you know, version of the Infester. Basically, it's got, um... It's got instant fungal growth, so it's like a, it's like a little missile, and it doesn't just slow down, it's a complete root. <laughs> so, maybe it... No, it, I, okay, I was gonna say, maybe it was okay in Wings of Liberty, but it really wasn't. Um, it was already kind of broken there. But imagine right now the combination of fully rooted fungal growth. Even that, even if it did have the missile, but full root fungal growth into corrosive bile would be the sickest combo you could do. I mean, it's already really strong, but... Okay, let's go. Nope, that's it. That's, that's not it. That's it, right? I'm out, though. Oh, I could have done four. Okay, I could have done four. I could have done four. <sighs> Loco Generation X happened after Boomers and Boomers. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. I am either a Zoomer or a Boomer, depending on the situation, Joshua. But in reality, I would be labeled as a Millennial. But it's, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Whatever the current situation calls for, that's what I am. Duh. Nope, nope, nope. No, no. No, no. no. No, that was the wrong one, no? Sometimes they do two and two, and other times they're like, no, I'm gonna do three, you do one. It does matter because it matters how much energy I've got left over for the fungal. <laughs> okay, now we're good. Come on, Loco, don't derp out. Okay, I, I panicked. I, I used it too soon. I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay.
SCV, good to go, sir. Escape to the beacon. Pew. See you later, losers. Sure Alright. Easiest challenge of my life. <laughs> this was trying to teach us about mineral walking. Which removes using a unit collision. Stimpak researched. Oh no. Sure thing. You got Outstanding. Don't touch me! Oh my god, he touched me! Don't touch me. No, don't 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 touch me. You gonna give me orders? Why not? We'll do. Sure. Stimpak is going to run out, by the way. Aye, aye, so I'll just reapply it myself. Embarrassing, man. That's the downside of live streaming. I could have edited that out. I would have edited that out if I was making a regular video, dude. <laughs> ah. And cut. Okay. Round 18. Stim micro. Huh. I wonder what I need to do. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Like this. <laughs> Can't wait. I'm feeling it. Oh, yeah. Cut. Route eighteen, stem micro. Armed and ready. Affirmative. That's fine. I can actually just hit W. I don't have to attack move. I can just hit W. I don't have to get like I'm too sweaty about it. This better be good. Keep your shirt on, Sparky. Outstanding. We'll do. Ten four. Go go go. Yes, sir. Got it. I'm on it. Roger that. Orders received. I'm scared. The big z mean zealot guy is looking at me. First try. I did it. Amazing. Prosmetic beam. Ah. This is another thing that's changed significantly over the years. So, Void Rays back in the day had. This thing that, like, their beam would get thicker depending on how long they were attacking for. Like, initially it was thick, and then it would get, like, thick with, like, two Cs, and then eventually it was, like, all uppercase with, like, spaces in between the letters and everything. Yeah, so the Void Ray's damage output increases the longer the Void Ray remains on a single target. And you could, like, charge up on one target, and then, with your thick beam, move to another target at a slower speed. There's all kinds of innuendos I could be... But I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to... No. Yeah. Okay. So, let's see. Yeah. It's ultimate thickness. Come on. Come on. Get down with the thickness. Open up your hands. Okay, sir. Blink train. Ah, uh, we have to do the cool micro trick. This is a cool little micro trick, actually. It looks really sweet when you get it nicely done. <laughs> Drowning deep in my sea of loathing. There you go. We did it. 
That's a cute little move, right? I like that move. It looks really pretty. You can shift Q to blink. So only the units that are in range are going to use the blink. Ah, I see a couple of you a little confused. <laughs> you can do that, Loco? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me let me show you how it's done. It's actually really neat. Um, so you move command in one direction, and then you sh hold down shift, and then you blink where you want to go. It's actually quite useful. If you're a Protoss versus Terran player, for example, like it's really helpful if you're harassing the Terran's main base. So you walk where you want to go, where you roughly want them to blink from. Hold down shift, hit uh, blink towards the high ground, and then we'll all do the magical little blink like that. Cool, right? Q blinking is illegal. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Usually you blink once and they're gone. No, no. No puns allowed in this stream, Muktavas. Puns will never be acceptable here. Never. No, shift queuing is, is really big. Actually, that's what threw me off when I first started playing Age of Empires 4 when that came out. Because, like, I think you could shift queue, but there was no visual for it or something. I think they've added that. But, like, in StarCraft, you basically shift queue all of the things. Loco, can you even call pro Protoss players? What? <laughs> no, no, see, we, we can't. Puns will be punished. There you go. I thought Protoss players don't do complicated stuff. It's actually kind of funny to me how over the years, right, ever since StarCraft II's first release, Protoss in a lot of people's minds is the all-army hotkey attack move race, right? So like F2A move on all of the things. But in reality, it's Zerg. Yeah, it's Zerg. Basically, Zerg goes... In the early game, you have to micro your queens, right? And then you set up engagements. That's kind of the micro, right? You have to, like, make sure your queens are controlled well. And then you have to attack move with the rest of the stuff. In the mid game, you need to attack move all of the things. So you set up surrounds. You come in from a couple different angles. Bada bing, bada boom. You collapse on top of the army. Maybe make it so your banelings don't run into, like, Archons or Siege Tanks or something like that, right? Honestly, the mid-game micro required for Zerg is incredibly minimal compared to Protoss and Terran. Protoss micro is super hard. Like, that is not easy. Especially when you get to, like, some of those late-game, you know, army compositions. That being said, Zerg late-game micro? Pretty much impossible. Pretty much, like, I don't know how many hands those pro gamers have. Maybe they have, like, a, sec like a secret secondary keyboard. That they're using with like their, you know, like Met Choke and Met Champ with Pokey, but like they have like extra arms somewhere. Maybe that's what they're doing. I'm not exactly sure, but it's it's very hard. Anyways, microing zealots is not that hard. You alright? Guys, it's gonna be easy, right? Just split. Donation accepted. Just split. I wasn't even close. Done. That was not bad. What's going on, Elliot? <laughs> Loco, you took my pun slash punish joke. I'll take five and try again with a different pun later. Ooh, I like your mindset, Elliot. Five dollars for every pun. That's good. That's good ratio. I love puns. Okay, no, no, no. I gotta just split them up really well. Yeah, yeah, you just need to split, like, perfectly. Take notes, Maru. This is how it's done. Well, not, not, not exactly this. <laughs> I gotta hold position them. Because they're, they're gonna derp out. They're melee units, right? So it's not quite like Marines. Okay, no, that's really ambitious for me, Loco. That is, that is not the way to do it. You gotta shift hold position on all of the things. Why did that go so much worse? <laughs> Why was that so bad? Orange, command. Orange, justice be done. Now, we stand as 
That's gotta be it. Nope. What? Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right easy. Didn't even shark. Bane versus Bane. This is just a regular ZVZ, right? Ah, yikes. It's an artificial intelligence microing things! Don't appreciate this. I do not appreciate this. What's happening right now? Basically, Serral. Basically, Serral. Stimpak Research. What do we do? Cloaked Banshees? Oh, okay. We get EMP'd them? Yeah, that ain't it, Loco. But that... <laughs> in theory, that is what you can do. I didn't know how many Banshees there were. There's two of them. This is why I always open up roaches. Smart. Yes, sir. Yeah, that should be good. Like, do you always stream on YouTube from now on? No, so I stream pretty much every day on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash loco TV. However, I've been doing Friday live streams on YouTube. And the streams on YouTube are a little bit more structured around, like, a subject. So today's subject is this StarCraft Master Challenge. And once I finish this, I want to go over the Team Liquid Map Contest Map Finalists. But, um, yeah, we're, we're, doing, uh, we're doing a little bit more of a structured stream. So I'm streaming every Friday right now, 4 to 8 p.m. Central European Summertime. At least that's roughly what I'm aiming for, like three to four hours long. And, um, yeah, I've been doing that for about a month right now. It's been fun. Seems like a lot of people are enjoying it, too, so. As long as you guys like it, I would like to do more of them. Um, blink of an eye. Complete the round in the time allowed. All right. Did I lose a stalker? Oh, <gasps> fuck! No! I think this was the one with the additional achievement, no? I think this was the one with the additional achievement. Oh, no. Oh, that was really close. Oh, didn't have blink. Got unlucky there as well with some of the targeting. <sighs> yeah, so what I quite like about the YouTube streams is that, like, after you are um, finished with them, they automatically get saved as a YouTube video, too. So that's kind of neat. So if you want to, like, um, if you want to go back, for example, and watch something again later, that's always an option. You can even do it while I'm live. But there's a, um, if you go to my channel, there's a YouTube live streams right over here so I made a playlist just for the live stream so you can actually go back and watch them if you want to it's kind of nice loco admitting he's lazy wait I'm lazy I 
I gotta wait until the absolute last possible moment, because they will regenerate another charge. <laughs> You've been rewinding the disturbed impression. <laughs> Ooh, wah, ah, ah. Close, 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 close. I don't know if I should target fire. I'm not sure. I think that's bait. We can try it out. No, no, no. They they derp they derp a little too much. Yeah, I shift queued right here at the start with the targeting, but. Okay, I'll do it once more. Maybe I missed one of my targets now. No, I need to actually not hold position blink them back. I actually, I, mm -hmm. I need to blink them closer by. Why is it going so much worse? I could have had it easy the first time around if I didn't derp. I was like, hey, I got it easy, nice. Oh, yeah, I cannot have idle stalkers. No, 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 I cannot. It's your birthday today, Andy? Happy birthday. Trying to blink a death stalker does not work. I don't recommend it. I don't know if you guys have ever tried. It's not a... Oh, paint it! <sighs> I could blink over the roaches, but then they die right away. <laughs> when you play Protoss, you're obligated to listen to Blink 182. Yeah? Do Protoss players usually listen to Blink 182? Why is this so much harder now? I'm dead. This guy's gonna die. No? Just make it immortal. Just make one immortal. <laughs> Idle stalkers, Loco. I need to be like a chameleon who can like move my eyeballs individ uh, individually so I could interpret everything that's going on. <laughs> I'm trying hard to not get my stalkers to die. Studying every single one of their animations is kind of hard. <laughs> Don't blame the micro, blame the macro. Honestly good advice for a game of StarCraft, but... That was good! 
As long as we hear that little sound effect, we know that we got it. Apparently, it doesn't give us a little fancy animation on the screen, but we got it. We got it. I'm a StarCraft pupil and an apprentice at the same time. All right, all right. So, I gotta still complete five rounds. I think these last five are the hardest ones. And now we're considered a StarCraft master. Very nice. Ah. Six more. This is called a point defense drone. <laughs> six more, sorry. Five, six. What's the bit what's the difference, guys? We shall stand a time for battle. Do you guys have blink? Oh my god, okay. Do I have storm? Ooh, that's really hard. Um, point defense drones. Point defense drones basically make it so that you can't. Why don't I have storm? You can't engage with units. If I blink on the siege tanks, though, I won't be able to... I think I have to move in the direction of the siege tanks instead. Woo! I, okay, okay. Here's what we gotta do. We gotta lift up the tanks, get the stalkers close to the battle, ideally tiptoe them in the direction of one of those siege tanks. In the meantime, we gotta feed back the point defense drones, morph the High Templar into Archons. Blink back the weakened stalkers that are affected by the marauders and ideally target fire down the marauders. So one at a time. And then we gotta reapply the liftoff ability. And then hopefully the Archon is done and we can kill everything else. I think in theory that's what we're supposed to do. Now I just gotta execute. Is it possible for me? How much time do I have? I've got one minute. Can I, can I bait the Vikings over here? No, 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 I cannot. Yeah, in the meantime, I gotta juggle three balls as well. Make breakfast. Make sure my toast doesn't burn. And, uh, yeah, tell my girlfriend. I don't know. Good morning. I think I probably want the High Templar taking a shot. Dead ain't it, Chief. That's not good. <laughs> True, son, John. There's a 70 second timer on this one, too. Hmm. Huh? I think that was close. If the other siege tank would have gotten some damage in over there, maybe. Maybe I lift the marauders instead? No, no, no. Oh, that's better, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you always lift siege tanks. 
Maybe that's not necessarily always the best choice. I was thinking maybe one tank, one Marauder would not be bad either, but... You've never seen anyone do it like that before? Well, there you go. Don't know if that was good or bad, but... Uh, there's a Dark Templar. What am I gonna do against the Dark Templar without detection? What? Am I supposed to make an Orbital Command? Ah, I... Huh? Where am I supposed to get my detection from? Do I have to kill my own s Oh, I'm supposed to use splash damage with the siege tanks, I think. I gotta shoot my own space construction vehicles. That's kind of messed up, man. Am I winning? I don't know! I, I'm just... We did it! Clean, concise execution. Maybe execution is not the right... Uh, anyways, um... Moving shot. Okay. Number 27. I think that that game was still a loss though, because if you lose an entire mineral line to one Dark Templar... <sighs> you uh, are very, uh, very much so dead, I think. But anyways. Uh... Uh, am I winning? Okay. No, 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 no! Keep going. Have you guys heard this ability called cloaking? Good. Jimmy, no! Two health and a dream. <sighs> avoid splash. Yeah, avoid getting hit is good advice. Good advice. Dead eye ghosts. What am I fighting? Oh. What? There's so many. Out with it. You gonna give me Okay, I need a rapid fire because I can't do it without uh that is choose ability or AI target. There you go. Uh, SC Master. There you go. You gotta snipe the Banes? Yeah, you do. Come again. I'm on it. What the f Are you kidding me, game? <laughs> <laughs> that was so much! Okay, I have Stimpak. I'm gonna have to activate it by the time that the big boy wave comes. Come on. You gonna give me this is basically, um, you know those, like, Counter-Strike, like, hit marker, aim, like, tester kind of programs? That's basically what we're doing right now. Solo operative, 
That ain't it. Aim training, is that what it's called? There you go. Can you tell I don't play those games? <laughs> you probably couldn't tell. Nope. Just smoke Xbox, says Upman. <laughs> okay, I need to split up my units and hotkey better. I need to, um... You guys are hotkey one, you guys are hotkey two. I need to quickly tap between. One time I got lucky and they all, all three, like the first wave at least, they, they all came from the same side. Yikes, low well, hotkey. Dang it. Snipe with the Marines too? No, I don't think I should snipe with the Marines. Maybe I'm mistaken though. I forgot to set up hotkeys this time. I don't think you should split. No, I don't think I should split. I think I just just make the banelings not get close. You don't take splash damage from banelings that don't get close, guys. Oh god, I rapid fire Stimpak. That is Don't recommend rapid firing Stimpak. I'll actually move them back, I guess, after. Um Never mind, I need to move them back right away. I thought maybe I could move them back later. Yeah, rapid firing Stimpak is not quite as good as rapid firing snipe. I reapplied Stimpak about seven times in a second. <laughs> Give me the sit rep. So I applied Stimpak there, and because of that, the Banelings got a little too close because I had to dance between my control groups. Hmm. I wasn't even close. I don't think I should stim at the start, should I? No, like the problem is... They deal... Mm -hmm. I don't think you want to shift Q snipe, no. I didn't stim at all. I didn't stim. Okay. Not stimming is better. Interesting. Let's dance? Oh god. <sighs> round 29. I remember round 30. Round 30 is a, a siege tank pickup one with a medevac and everything, if I'm not mistaken. Not my favorite. Alright guys, let's dance. How am I supposed to dance? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, what? Um... Um, uh, how about making Marauders? Or a Bunker? 
That was awful. This one took me so long, Loco. I gotta tie, kite two zealots at once. Just don't be bad, guys. That's the strat. Oh god. Don't get too close. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I gotta move one clockwise. Or, or like far apart so we can go around in circles. That's... I think that's what we gotta do. No, no, out of way, out of way, out of way. Oh, yikes. How am I doing? Oh, you could use some help here. Maybe you shouldn't have walked into that freaking light. You should... Okay, so I was moving one counterclockwise and one clockwise on the first attempt. That's not what I need to do, because you're going to meet in the center and everything's going to change. I don't have to go all the way to the edge, though. I don't think. Why am I automatically going clockwise on one of them and counterclockwise on the other? Oh, yikes. Yeah, it's impossible now, right? Oh, okay, 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 okay. I could do smaller circles. But then they're gonna also turn more frequently. And the guy in the middle might be a bit of an issue. Ah, yikes. There's no timer on this one. So maybe that wasn't actually too bad, because like, even if I have one left over, I should still, if I do it well, be able to control. Okay, get him, Jimmy. We had to do the grand shuffle there, but we got there, I think. Who? You got it. No! Come on, man! So every time you take a turn, since they're moving at a straight speed, you... Well, you don't slow down, but they cut the corner. So, like... <sighs> I'm actually just doing it for the content, guys. I don't want to be finished with this challenge too early, you know? Because then, you know, what am I going to do the rest of the stream? So, it's actually all by design. In case you guys are wondering. 100%, dude. Oh, Jimmy. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's by design. I definitely... Uh... The Q commands are the meme. Jimmy, why did you switch targets? I, <laughs> I need two mouses. <laughs> One on each hand. We need multiple cursors. This better be good. Been waiting on you. Armed and ready. Sure. This better be good. I'm on it. I uh that's fine. Yes. Oh, Figure eight micro? Is this a new technique? No, that was dumb. I don't know why I decided to suddenly go into a different direction. Oh, we, we got to the just get good face a while ago. Yeah. Jimmy. Jimmy, start running. I could try and get him to switch targets. No. 
Big circles? Yeah, but the big circles have lamps on them, so I got caught on a lamp earlier. But maybe a big circle is better. I don't think it's so much the size of the circle that matters, it's about how you use it. Okay, so not like that. If you run in a straight line, you're guaranteed to get hit, though. Jimmy! This be good. Jimmy, you're too slow, man! Jimmy in the center was barely attacking there because the circle was so big. Like, <laughs> he had to run to catch up. <sighs> Jimmy, keep going. Okay. Sure. Come on, Loco. Don't be dumb. I know this is hard for you. Come on, Loco. You got this. Don't be dumb. Oh, I'm running on a mouse pad. No, I was dumb. Oh, man. I ran out of mouse pad. My DPI is too low. I couldn't go anywhere, man. I was in the bottom right of my... I was moving up to the desk. <sighs> okay, I'm I'm moving my mouse in the center of my mouse pad now. Oh right, I I need to still hit the shift button. I moved my keyboard out of the way so I had more mouse button, but or more mouse pad, but I forgot about the shift key. No, no, I gotta start with moving. Are you saying it's not a mousepad issue, it's a skill issue? I don't like this conversation. I'm pretty sure it's a mousepad issue, guys. Whoa! They suddenly switched targets. Rapid fire move command would actually be so sick. I never considered rapid firing move command, but you can make really smooth circles with rapid fire move command. Oh my god, that's the sickest cheat ever. Wait, I just want to see if that works. I never considered rapid firing move command. Hold, hold up, hold up. Does that work? I've never even thought about it. That is a brilliant suggestion. Um... My move command button is Q. No, that's Loco. Does that work? There you go, Jimmy. Keep it. G <laughs> Jimmy's gonna walk in the sickest circle ever. <laughs> There's a limit, though, to the amount that you can set up. Yeah, yeah, that's what the pros do for a lot of things, I know. Well, for a lot of things might not be necessarily accurate, but... Dude, this is sick. Okay, I'm still terrible, though. That's, that's a skill issue. Oh, well. Hotkey to Marines? No, 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 no. That makes it more complex, I'm pretty sure. 
I think we're gonna run into one of those problems where I hotkey it, but I don't actually use the hotkey. No, no, no. I don't know, guys. Like, it looks better, but is it really better? That's what she... No, no. <laughs> Stop putting corners in your circles. Okay, Newton. I gotta figure out my pie situation, okay? I gotta calculate pie. <laughs> circles don't have corners, loco. Mm. See, this is where we might disagree. It depends on the... Anyways. Um. <laughs> you gonna give me orders? What kind of pie, loco? This is not going any better. This is... <laughs> I'm still bad. Use the golden ratio, loco. If I use the golden ratio, I don't know if my marines are going to do a better job. Oh no. The mathematicians have arrived. <laughs> They're going to ask me to find why soon. I don't know why I'm doing this, okay? Could have been playing a nice relaxing game, like getting over it. Instead, we're here. Make a figure eight. If you have enough space, a figure eight would actually be really sick. Do you think I can pull off a figure eight? <laughs> no, no. I don't have enough space. Figure eight, just one marine. I think we're getting a little bit too fancy, guys. This is not going any better with me getting more and more fancy over time. Armed and ready. Yeah, rapid fire delay is what's getting me here. I need to go into my Windows register and bump up the speed. What? That was such a beautiful circle! What's going on, Life WCG or, or WCJ Rotter? Loco, are you drunk or is this how you usually drive? Yes. Yeah, I usually yes to both. No, no. I've had um, accepted. two cups of coffee today, a glass of milk, and about a liter of water. No, about two liters of water at this point. Yeah, yeah. I did drive today as well. It was a dangerous affair. I think what I'm going to do is try and run both of the Marines clockwise. Well, this is clockwise for me. What I'm rotating on street anyways. This better be good. Affirmative. Oh god. Yeah, no that that's this is going much much worse. No, no, no I've had food too, believe it or not. so good <sighs> you gonna give me orders oh yeah by the numbers boys armed and ready we could use some help here i panic yes sir you gonna give me orders oh sure. no yikes I don't think I can I don't think I can stutter step with all three of them. It just doesn't make it fast enough. By the numbers, boys. Even without ping. Got it. 
Oh, I accidentally shift queued onto Jimmy himself. No stim pack in this challenge. No, no, no. Armed and ready. No, no, this better be good. Why not? By the number. You gonna give me orders? We could use some help here. Aye, aye. Of course. Keep your shirt on. Armed oh, why just? <laughs> oh, no. Wait, what am I even doing wrong here? I'm not sure. So sometimes the Marines, when they're going like around the next Q point, they like take a step out of line. And at that point, the Zealot hits them, right? Maybe I should try and bait the Zealots initially. We should like hurt the Zealot. Like not, you know, like a, you know. We'll we'll start we'll start <laughs> we'll start like this and I will split off one of them. Okay, no, that's <laughs> see that gets stuck on the things, man. The outer perimeter is bait. Like the absolute outer circle is not what you want to do. Okay. What's going on? I'm confused. Why are you sliding? I don't know if this is better or worse. Jimmy, go do something. Jimmy! Uh, I don't like this. Yeah. I mean, in theory, that's that's a good plan. Assuming execution is really good. Oh, they're programmed to hit different targets? That might actually be what's happening here. Yeah, maybe the zealots aren't just sliding around. Maybe they're automatically targeting one of them. I think I should just do what I was doing earlier and just do it better. What am I doing? There. That was so good. And then suddenly the zealot was like, "Ha ha, got you now." I don't even know what went wrong there. I think the uh, the the marine was running in a straight line. No. Maybe the circle got too small. Maybe that's the problem. Oh, that's awkward. <laughs> they met in the center. No. <laughs> okay. They both have to go in the same rotation. Just a little awkward to set up. But it's doable. Just don't hit one of the lights. Oh no. They both got stuck around the same time. Stop putting in a lot of corners. 
<laughs> I mean, it's not like I want to put in a lot of quarters. <laughs> I love the advice, though. Maybe we should go with, like, an oval shape, okay? Maybe that's the preferred orbit. Ovals may be where it's at, dude. Come on. No! What are you doing? Yes, sir. No! Okay, ovals? Ovals are OP. I'm telling you guys. Ovals is where it's at. We didn't consider that geometrical shape yet. We tried squares. We tried rectangles. I even tried a triangular formation. Circles, of course. I think ovals is where it's at. Ovals might be peak geometry for this particular challenge. You know what? We haven't tried the hexagon yet. Everyone knows hexagons in real life at the very least are OP. Yeah. Yeah. Hexagons is where it's at, man. I'm going to try a hexagon before we continue down this oval situation. Okay. It's a bit of a strange hexagon. I'll, I will tell I will give you. Yeah. No. No. Ovals. 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 Now, figure eight doesn't work. There's not enough space. So my marines don't even want to sit too close to one another, which is a bit confusing. But I think that's probably because, like, they can't actually get, you seeing that? Like, they don't want to get, hold up, let me try and get them really close together. I don't think they want to touch. These marines are social distancing, uh, distancing from one another. Look, look, I'm, I'm pressing in the center right now. They don't want to get any closer than that. Now they want to get closer. That was weird. They're wearing spacesuits and everything, man. Like, if anyone is safe. I would imagine guys in spacesuits, you know, probably don't have to distance that much, but the pathing is a little funky. No, 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 I'm not even magic boxing. Like I was pressing in the middle of the, the thing. So if this is a magic box, you see, oh, I could get him to queue up to, okay. I'm a little confused by the mechanic here. Because I think these marines may have some extra commands added to them somehow. Because they don't behave like normal marines do. You see what I mean? I don't know. They, they do weird shuffling. Okay. Right click on Jimmy in the middle. Go around in a big circle. Pull Jimmy from the front. That's fine. This better be good. Looking forward to it. Gangway. I mean, this is excellent now, right? Of course. Oh yeah. I'm on it. Who wants some? Watch me mess this up still somehow though, because I'm really good at that. I'm really good at grasping defeat from the jaws of victory. There's no timer, right? Jimmy? Nope. You gonna give me orders? Roger that. We'll do. Show First try, baby! Let's go!
Oh, that one seemed really hard. I can't imagine some people get stuck on that one for at least five minutes. Maybe, maybe even six. <sighs> All right. Um, this is the final one. I believe that this one's considered the hardest. So basically what you gotta do... When the stalkers shoot... Before the siege tank actually gets connected with... You gotta pick it up. And then you gotta drop the siege tank off again. But not before the medevac itself gets shot. I think this is probably a tricky one, but I don't know. Now what? On my way. I don't know how you do this properly. <laughs> well, not like that anyways. <laughs> I don't know why I was moving. I don't think I need to move. This was just a couple of warm-ups. Like I don't move. Well, I'm not trying to move. No, I, I'm not moving. It's just that I... I'm trying to, you know, click things and this medevac automatically shovels around. <laughs> just heal the tank. Siege mode? No, 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 no. There's no way I can actually work on target firing. So you gotta have him in sync. Like not... Okay, so as long as it's in sync, if you get like the first bunch of waves right, I think you're good. Yeah, you gotta find the rhythm. StarCraft's now a rhythm game. So as soon as I move, the stalkers move away as well, and the rhythm will be lost, man, because they won't be firing in sync anymore. Bye, bye, bye is what they'll, you know, be like when they're no longer in sync. Yeah. They're no longer synchronized. If I'm gonna move, I need to move in the direction of the stalkers, as counterintuitive as that that feel, yeah. Where's the emergency? Ready for pickup? Let's go. Light flight here. Dropping off. Acknowledge. <laughs> so bad. Dude, just tell me why I'm doing this. Ain't nothing like a Ah! Uh. <sighs> For our, our entertainment, Loco? It was an NSYNC joke. Anyways, doesn't mind. <sighs> I want it! I think you should just pick up the tank, run back home, siege it up on the high ground, and wait until the stalkers can't get in. I think that's what we need to do. Ready for pickup? Heading out. Confirmed. Light flight here. Acknowledged. Now what? Inside. Problem is, the closer I get, I heard that. the closer I get. 
the less micro room I have as well. So actually, microing in the direction of the stalkers is bad. Yeah. Luckily, you have to prevent the stalkers from hitting. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So wait, the stalkers are not supposed to kill my units. Alright. <laughs> That's good advice. I'll keep that in mind for this next attempt. So they're not supposed to hit my units. Gotcha. Okay, okay. Why didn't you tell me that sooner, man? Just don't get hit. Just don't get hit. A All right. Subscriber has been acquired. There it is. What's going on, Burger? Thank you very much for the tier two sub. Welcome. <sighs> Guys, advice actually helped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, they do appear. Just only when you actually leave the lobby. There it is. I'm now officially a StarCraft master. Donation accepted. Thank you very much, Alexander. GG Loco. Hey, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. By the way, we got promoted to Masters 1 last week. Off of like... Yeah, I lost a bunch of games in a row, but I don't think I lost like a half bar of progression worth. I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but... <sighs> What's going on, Miri? Am I watching Virtual? Because that was a clutch. I'm too focused on StarCraft to understand that reference. What is Virtual? What? A Trek Mania player from Norween? Uh, from, from Norween? From what? Donation <laughs> From Norway. There you go. Okay. Yeah. No, I wouldn't have. I. I. That's. I don't. <laughs> He's a Trek Mania streamer, Loco. All right, all right, I see. I've actually seen a bunch of players playing Trek Mania, man. That's... It's not easy. You know who's really good at Trek Mania I found some time ago? You won't be surprised to learn it's Euthermal. Euthermal, for some reason, seems to be good at games. <clears throat> Anyways, he was playing a bunch of that at, uh, at Home Story Cup last time we played. Maru? I think Maru would probably be pretty good as well at Trek Mania. Anyways, look at that. We even now have a, uh, a new portrait. Don't we? Okay, we gotta load up a new screen. Um, which one is the master one? The one that says master? Okay, I'm gonna be using that one moving forward. Ah. <sighs> I don't really like this portrait too much. What do you guys think of the 2022 I Am Champion portrait for Serral? So, it comes from this, like, very large image. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it very easily. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to find it. But it comes from this, like... Skilled up version of it that looks amazing. Nicola Schwa Swa or Shao Swa. I don't know exactly how to pronounce that, but I believe he's the one that made it. He made all of the other portraits too. But um Yeah, the the full version of this particular image looks amazing, but the smaller version not so much, especially considering like the other Serral portraits that are here in the game already. These are all really sick. I'm I'm not sold on this one personally, but all right, guys. Um, I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick. I'm gonna grab something to eat. When we come back, I'm gonna review the Team Liquid map contest maps. So the maps that may very well be in the future map pool of StarCraft 2. I'll be back in a moment. Don't worry though. 
I'm not leaving you all by yourself. Lenny will be here to watch over you, so. I think that'll be enough. Yeah. GG. Easy win. <sighs> the Zerkling had no chance against the might of Toby. Well done, dude. Sick work. Zerklings get countered by cats, everybody knows that. Did the game's main menu not give you any music in the background? Are you just sitting here reflecting your thoughts? Man, I see a couple hundred people left as well. I get it. Leaving you all in silence. Thinking about the things that have happened, you know, over the last couple of days. Yeah, man. It was weird, Loco. Sorry about that. I will give you um, some Terran music in the background. Yeah, we'll, we'll listen to some of the... Ah, oh, there it is. Toby, no! This is a family-friendly sh... Okay, yeah, your toes are fine. Okay, thank you, thank you. A new subscriber has been acquired. What's going on, Big Dodo? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so the plan for the remainder of today's stream is to check out the TLMC 17 finalists. So this was announced, well, 11 p.m. last night GMT, but, you know, that is, uh, I think, past midnight. So I guess technically today, at least for my, uh, my time zone. Um... For those of you unfamiliar, the TLMC, it essentially dictates what the future map pool in StarCraft 2 will look like. So generally speaking, yeah, the Team Liquid map contest is rather important. Here's the thing, like, balance is oftentimes something that people discuss a lot. So for example, right now, ghosts are considered to be quite good. 
and a lot of people are busy discussing ghosts. But one thing that really strongly determines the balance of the game is the actual map layout. Like for example, over the years the maps have gotten a little bit smaller and that obviously directly affects the way that the game is being played and what is really strong. If a map has many bases on it, usually it tends to be a little bit better for Zerg. If it has a couple bases only, it tends to be better for timing attacks and maybe if the bases are far apart, it's difficult especially for Terran and Protoss to take them. So the maps really and the balance of the game really strongly is determined by yeah, the map design. So what's cool about this tournament is that basically the way that it works is that like they ask the community to make a good map, hopefully, or to just make anything, to submit it to this particular event. And there's like a, a couple of different phases for it. So there's like a, a judging phase and there's like a selection phase and then there's a tournament phase and a bunch of other things. Um, and currently we are at the finalist selection. So I think ultimately a top 10 will be formed out of these maps over here. And then the, uh, the I don't know exactly how it works, but like the, um, the best maps get a reward. Yeah, so first place is $800, second place 500 bucks and so forth, which is pretty cool. Maps that plays high in the TOMC are not guaranteed to be added. ESL and Blizzard will reference TOMC 17 and other map making competitions and choose maps yeah, to add to their own discretion. Right, so it makes sense. But generally speaking, the maps that do well in this particular tournament are also the ones that we will end up playing on in the end. Now, I haven't looked at any of these maps yet. I don't really know exactly what I'll be looking for either. Obviously, I haven't played any games on any of these maps, so yeah, it's gonna be my first gut instinct, but at the very least, we should be able to get a a decent understanding, I guess, right? So that should be should be kind of fun. What did I eat when I was downstairs? I, uh, I ate a banana, but for obvious reasons, I decided to eat the banana off stream, because I've made the mistake of eating bananas on stream before, and uh, that has turned into a bit of a Photoshop fest. So I think it's probably best if I don't do that anymore moving forward. Because eating bananas is a bit of a dangerous game if you're live on the internet. Anyways, um, let's see. So there's a couple different categories. First category is called Standard. So a medium-sized map, players tend to have more flexibility on these maps. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Average rush distance, 33 to 38 seconds. So that is roughly what we have right now. Playable map dimension guidelines as well. Okay. So, the first map is called Dragon Scales. Made by Milo on Fire. I will be opening up their names real quick as well. Yeah, so Milo on Fire has made Curious Minds LE, which is this particular map. You may remember it. Good map, very fun map. So, forward high ground outpost plays a major part in defense and coordinating attacks. The linear third is open and easy to access. Whereas a triangle third is choked with the option to partially block out right, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Cool. I'm actually going to take off my headphones for a moment because I am still recovering from an ear infection on both sides. I just finished a round of antibiotics actually a couple days ago, which is pretty good. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, can I paste this directly into Photoshop? Yeah, I can. Okay, so that should probably make it a bit easier for us to uh, judge this. So the map is called Dragon Scales. So if I want to paint on it, I should be able to use that as well. That's kind of nice. Maybe he made other maps too? Yeah, maybe he did. But I'm not exactly sure on all the names. Okay, so we have an Overlord Pillar over here. Got a little jump up location over here for Reapers to get into the base as well. Obviously, it's going to be mirrored. Main base seemed pretty large. Natural over here. Pretty straightforward. Multiple options for a third base. So you could expand down south over here, up north in a triangle base, just like that. And then obviously you can also take this one right over here in this location. Some side blockers here and there. There's a couple of bridges as well. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Ah, this looks really good. Not really too crazy. I mean, obviously, this is the standard category, right? Usually, the spicier maps are going to be in one of the other categories, but... Uh... Yeah, this looks good. I like this. I would play on this. If I, uh... <laughs> if I see this map doing well, I would not be surprised whatsoever. 
So forward expansion on the main attack path, right? Collapsible rocks next to the triangle third base. Okay. Oh, so that's these right over here. I see. So I guess they will collapse only half of the ramp. Interesting. So you can knock down the rocks. They will collapse on the ramp. And then you can knock down these rocks again to open it back up. Gotcha. Nothing all too crazy here. Pretty straightforward. Superu man. Superu man made a map called Golden Wall. And I'm pretty sure that that is his favorite map because he's basically been making new versions of Golden Wall for some time. This map is aptly named Silver Wall. Now, Superu man made a load of maps. Back in Industries, Cloud Kingdom, Eternal Empire, Golden Wall, Purity in Industry, Turbo Cruise, Waterfall, Zen. I think Golden Wall is actually one of the very best maps that we've ever had in StarCraft 2. Remember this one? This map was sick. I love this map. So I can't blame him. I would certainly not be against just uh, having a new version of that map once again around. So let's have a quick little peek. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so this one is definitely a little bit different than Golden Wool, though. So I think this is the main base. And then over here in the top left is another main base. No, I'm not being sarcastic about Golden Wool. No, 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 that was me being serious. I know I'm sarcastic most of the time, but I actually think Golden Wool is one of the very best maps we've ever had in Legacy of the Void. Okay, standard wall over there. Third base options, right over here, right over here. One forward over here too. Okay. So how exactly does the wall work? I think these are golden mineral fields that have to be mined out. I'm actually going to have to load this one up in game because I don't think we can figure it out over here. We're going to have to load these maps or like at least some of these maps in game because otherwise I don't think we can see exactly what's happening here. So there's high yield gases on some of these. That's nice and all. Interesting. Okay. So what exactly does the description say? The silver wall has five openings where units can pass through. Destroying the rocks in the middle of the map significantly changes attack rates. So is that like one wall or is it like multiple walls that just work out like that? Let's see. I don't know if those were golden minerals in the mid, because it definitely did look like it, but maybe they're just regular rocks. We're going to do a little bit of sightseeing. Yeah, you're right, actually. This map feels significantly bigger than Dragon Skills. But I guess it's in the same category, so... Oh, these are rocks right over here. So the sections in between are rocks. And this is already open. Okay, so I actually misunderstood. So by default, units can go through the center. And after knocking down other rocks, 2,000 per debris, so that's actually quite a lot. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so I thought these were golden mineral fields from that screenshot, but that's not quite what it is. So by default, the units can only go through the center, but you can open up additional attack paths by destroying the debris. Reminds me a little bit of the AoE map, Mountain Pass. <laughs> I don't know why that pops in my head, but... Okay! Actually sick. I actually really like that idea. So 2000 HP is quite a bit. They have three armor as well. So you can't get through these debris very quickly. Yeah, okay. I, I, yeah, I like that idea. This looks good. Should I make a list, by the way? Of my initial impressions? Dragon skills. Looks standard, but 8 out of 10 because it seems good. Silver wool so far, I'm going to give a 9 out of 10. I like the idea of this a lot. Maris. Maris is going to be the next map maker with a map called Star Child. 
She always names her maps after heavy metal songs, if I'm not mistaken. So her maps are Death Aura, Disco Bloodbath, Everdream, Lightshade, Moondance, Nightshade, Romanticite, and Stargaze and Wintergates. There you go. So basically, she's made a gajillion maps, two of which are currently in the map pool, Moondance and Stargazers. So she's been very good at it. Starchild is a standard map with 14 bases, two of which have double rich gases. There are no overlord pillars at the natural. Like a typical standard map, there are also two third base options, line of sight blockers and some rocks. Is this Nightwish? I don't know. Starchild. Is that a Nightwish song? Could be. All right. Uh, main base. Jump up pad right over there. No overlord position. Although you can definitely place one over here and one over there. I think that's fine. Another good spot, another spot, another spot. Quite a few options. Um, so two third base options that you can go into. And then a push through the center of the map. I think that's probably the distance. Just like that. And obviously it's mirrored on the other side of the map too. Well, yeah, it looks good, right? Like nothing really... I always like the way that she picks colors for the maps. This looks really pretty. So it's like a purple-ish, blue-ish. And then with some sand to mix it up, which I think is pretty sick. The outer sections here are kind of interesting. So you can go around like that or obviously go through the side blockers. Is that a double high yield gas? It is. Double high yield gas is incredibly, incredibly strong. Like you can play one base muta here, easy peasy. A lot of maps don't really have overlord pillars anymore. But this certainly looks good. Yep, initial impressions here, positive. Star Child. I'm gonna give this one also an 8 out of 10. Ancient Cistern, made by Sky Piranha. Who also has made a bunch of other maps in the past. Berlingrad? Yeah, I think Berlingrad actually may be the only one. Um, I'm not exactly sure. He might have another one too. Berlingrad was the um, the nice macro map from the previous season. Do I like gold bases? I think gold bases are sweet when they're like in a contested spot. Like we have, for example, right now on some maps where like, um, say like... Both players have access to like six bases, and if they want a seven base, they have to take the base in the center. I think that's pretty cool. Overall, um, if you can take them very easily, it could be a fun dynamic, but not as big. Excuse me, I'm a fan of that in general. Ancient Cistern, a balanced layout which provides room for many different strategies. Okay. So, let's go again. Got our Motlesses. Welcome. Okay, main base, Overlord Pillar, natural. Two third base options. I mean, you're starting to see a pattern, I'm sure. Base over there, base over there, base over there. Rush distance to the other side of the map is like that. I mean, this is essentially identical. <laughs> uh, essentially identical to Star Child. Look at that, right? It's very similar, actually. Dude, it's very similar in layout. Yeah, there's a little bit of a dynamic going on in the center that's different. So this section over here is different. But other than that... Well, the colors are different too, I get that. But other than that, it's definitely... Uh, yeah, the center part is different, but... In general, pretty pretty reminiscent. This this section over here is different, but mostly the same. This one doesn't seem as pretty to me. I like the color schemes, and you know what? I'm gonna give color schemes and having a nice, pretty-looking map like that bonus points. So Ancient Cistern is gonna get a 7.5 out of 10, just because it's 
It's fine as map layout goes, I'm pretty sure. Nothing too crazy. But it's just a little too much green for my liking. I kind of like the... Uh, this one is a little bit more spice to it. Not just color-wise, but also with the double high-yield gas. I think I'm actually gonna bump up Star Child by point half or point five, just because Dragon Skills is also super standard. I kind of like a little bit of spice in my maps these days. Maybe it's because I cast a lot more than I play. As a player, usually you want to have just the same type of map over and over and over again. But I think as a uh, as a caster and as a viewer, yeah, the spicier maps are a little bit more interesting. Okay, next category, Rush. So the maps favor early game aggression and offensive play. Average rush distance, 33 seconds or less. Playable map dimensions, a little bit smaller, right? Yeah, a little bit smaller than the previous one. Okay, so we have a map by Hyper1. That does not ring a bell. Let me see if he has a Liquipedia page. Um, Not as far as I can tell. Okay. Not sure. So he might be new. But that's okay. Every base taken except the triangle fourth requires defending only one additional choke point. The triangular third base has no forward ram or choke to defend. Rather it has a ramp. Okay. Two narrow horizontal passages lie near the center. You can only feasibly defend one of them at a time. Although there are no overlord pillars at the natural expansion, an overlord can float out of reach of ground units in the dead space near the Vespian geysers. Okay then. Whew, okay. A new map maker, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. So a triangular fourth base. Okay, I think they probably mean this one. It's probably like that, right? That's that looks like a triangle to me. So main base. There's death space over here to hang your overlords. Death space over here to hang your overlord. There's a pillar over there, but that's not going to do you much good. Pillar over here too. I think that one is probably more important together with that one. So very large main base. Looks like a little jump up location for reapers over here. That is important. Okay, standard wall off over there. Only one choke to worry about over there. Only one choke to worry about over there. So this isn't a rush category. That does mean that units should be able to get to the other side of the map very quickly. And it certainly looks like they can. This is like a waterfall-esque type of ledge right over here. Like waterfall alley, the map that we currently have in the map pool. But there's a little bit of dead space in between, I believe. Which is kind of interesting. So, siege tanks in this position would be amazing, or any type of siege unit. Like, lurkers would be pretty good there, too. Um, I like the look of this one a lot. My main concern is just that it might be a little bit too short, because it seems like it takes no time at all. So, what's the map called? Cryolysis. Let's load it up in game real quick, just so we can see how quick the rush distance actually is. It seems incredibly short. And if a map is super short, generally everyone just cheeses. <laughs> Which I don't really like too much. But maybe I'm wrong. Let's have a look. Ooh, it's snowing. I'm going. What's going on, Echo? Okay, so let's see. Uh, I'm going to send it at 15 seconds in game time. Sure thing. Let it snow, let it snow. We'll probably uh, get our next map pool next year spring after the snow is gone, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> At least we'll have a nice cold-themed map for a bit, huh? 
So 15 seconds is when I send it. Okay, so it's about 29 seconds. That is certainly on the short end of things. Reapers are going to be able to get across a little bit faster. But obviously that's not as much of a concern. But 29 seconds is very short. Usually the short maps are like 30 seconds minimum. I mean, I understand it's only one second more, but uh, it adds up pretty quick. Yeah, it adds up pretty quick. But the map does look really pretty. It's hard to say, obviously, how it actually plays out. But Yeah, okay. I love the aesthetic. Aesthetically, it's really nice. Uh, cryolysis. So this is a different category. So you got to judge these mostly on like their categories, right? So this is standard. This is a rush. Um, it's a rush map, so we should expect it to be short. It looks really pretty. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I wonder if it's a little too like short, but maybe I'm wrong. Why am I suddenly doing it differently? Armistice! Armistice! Um, it's a standstill, right? Armistice. Armistice. There you go. Thank you, Google. This is one of those words that I've written, or sorry, I've read in books, but I don't know how to pronounce because nobody ever uses it. Armistice. At least there's no Jaganatha, or Jaganatha, or whatever. Uh, this is made by The Music246. He's made a whole bunch. Most notably... Oh, actually. Oh, okay, I was gonna say. It's not just these. Oblivion was awesome. Oblivion has won a previous map contest. But sadly, it was never used, which... Like, not on the ladder, anyways. It was used in the GSL code S, but not on the ladder. Um... Yeah, that was a shame. He's also got Roughneck, that I think was also used in the GSO. This map was also cool. I liked it a lot, but also not used on the ladder. But then as far as like his actual maps go, 16-bit, 2000 Atmos, Ice and Chrome, Oxide, and Triton. So a lot of those. Yeah, looking pretty good. Not not so great for Zork, though, win-loss ratio-wise. Other than Ice and Chrome, I guess. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's have a look. Ooh. It's got water and a bridge. Whoa. This looks like a, a th kind of a funny name actually for a rush category map, but yeah. A ceasefire on a on a rush map. Um okay, so we've got a wood in the main base. Ramp right over there. Or ramp right over there. Flat ground right over here, so. Yeah, can you make a naval fleet on this map? No flying units, we get boats instead. You can sail with your units to the other side of the map. That would be something. Jump up locations right over there, okay. There's like a, a river going around here, look at that. Okay, so if you want to get to the other side, I would imagine it goes like this. Oh, it's actually interesting, yeah, I'm pretty sure units will... Pick the exact opposite path depending on where you spawn. So there's a chance that, like, you will completely miss your opponent's move out. Okay, third beta option right over there. This looks cool. I like it. Very pretty looking map, actually, so far. Not sure about those gigantic pylons in the middle of the map. Imagine you could use those as warp infields. That would be something. But this seems like a map with a bit of a trick. Let's have a look at that one as well in game. Armistice? Is that how you write that? Should probably look at the correct category, huh? Alright. Parting Solar, one pylon ramp block. You remember that, Olek? Yeah, that was on uh, Oblivion. Parting figured out that on Oblivion, in the GSL code S, you could wall your opponent's ramp with one pylon, rather than the conventional three. That was an oversight by the map maker. And apparently, he managed to hide that until playing in a premier tournament. <laughs> it counted as a win, but it was a bit of a naughty one. Okay. 
So we're going to send it again at 15 seconds. Just so we can roughly see how long it's going to be. Uh, yep. Okay, let's do a little bit of sightseeing as well. Yeah, so those massive pylons. It's like a Protoss theme park, man. Okay, some rocks over here too. That's cool. Oh, it's like a pocket base. Yo, it's got a pocket base with like little mineral fields over there. I didn't even notice that because of the, the theme park feel. No base is in the center though. Like the center bit is very dry. Anyways, so this one definitely has a longer rush distance, right? Actually, no, very similar. Wait, 15 seconds? And it arrived at what, 49? Yeah, okay. So, 34 seconds, right? Am I getting that wrong? I send it at... I'm not crazy, right? 34 seconds? That is way slower than the previous map. Yeah. Wait, what? The bridges are also not here. Uh... You know what, guys? I think this may be an old version of... Okay, yeah, this is an entirely different map. I filled out the exact name, and it was hosted by someone called The Music. So... Is there another version? Maybe I gotta go to the North American server? I think this is an old version of the map. I think that the... Oh. I think that the... Um, map maker is from the States. I'm a veteran. Thank you. Let's see if we can find it over here. Is... Is that it? This one still does... It lacks... No, that's also different. That is... That is not the same map. That's also different. I mean, it's clearly the same tile set, but they're definitely different. <laughs> okay, I'm not exactly sure. So it's supposed to look like this, with two bridges in the center. Okay, well, I guess we're not on the most up-to-date version in the game yet. So that's gonna make it quite difficult to judge the map, but... Maybe change the name of it? I'm not sure. Anyways, um, from what I've seen, it looks kinda cool. I'm confused though by the whole situation, but... So it should be 34 seconds is what someone said. Let's go down, Jerome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna give this one an 8 out of 10 as well. It looks pretty good. Pink Moon. Made by Monitor. That also does not ring a bell. Pink Moon is a two-player rush map. The fastest attack path is lined with two inhibitor zones in medium small choke points. Going around will let players take better engagements at the sacrifice of longer movement times. The expansion layout follows a fork pattern with a high de degree of sy symmetry and subtle trade-offs in the way the players choose to expand. No Zelnaga towers, three separate sets of 4x4 rocks, two small inhibitor zones along the central path, 12 standard bases. Ooh. Pink Moon, also known as Spring in Japan, or <laughs> at least that's the vibe I'm getting. There's a lot of trees on this map. Um, Reaper jump up pad, no overlord. Where did you put your overlords? Uh, no overlord location over there, none over there. That doesn't look like one. So you could, I guess, put them in the back, but nothing out on the map to scout for overlords? Are these? No, that's not a high ground, is it? Maybe it is. Maybe these are high ground pillars, but they're kind of difficult to spot. And, oh, it's not symmetrical. This one has a lot more... Oh, okay, hold up. So you go from here, over there, two third base options. Now, 
No, these are all 1v1 maps. Nobody cares much about 2v2 maps. So those are the only bases. So if you draw a diagonal line from one side to the next, this is... That's a lot of dead space in the middle. Like this whole section over here is basically irrelevant. I mean, not irrelevant, irrelevant, but like... It's gonna be pretty easy to create a split map scenario on this map. So there are two inhibitor zones over here in the middle. So that slows down any any rush distances. So you go from here, and then you're slowed down over here. A little faster, slow down over here, a little faster. Interesting. I want to see what this looks like in-game. Pink Moon. Can I not just not find the maps today? It's very pretty in game. Okay, I'll go back to EU, I guess. How have you found it in game? Oh, you're just saying it looks so pretty? Okay, I, I for some reason I can't find some of the maps today. I'm not exactly sure why. Anyways, it looks good. It looks fine. I like the inhibitor zones in the middle, actually. That's kind of cool. Not really too standout for me, but usually I'm not a big fan of, like, the rush maps in general. I, I don't know. It's just a personal preference of mine. I don't really like the I'm inviting cheese maps as much. So I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10, too. But I don't know what rush distances are, so... Arrowholm by Folumin. Also does not ring a bell. Also, I think, a new map maker. Small rush map with six bases per player. Main attack route leads through a dangerous low ground. Side paths are on the high ground, but blocked by long rocks at one point. Okay. There's a Zelnaga tower at 5 and 11 o'clock that gives vision of some of the high ground side paths. It's hidden behind line of sight blockers. Interesting. Okay. Everyone gets an 8 out of 10 in, in loco school. Just for showing up. No, but these are obviously the finalist maps, right? So they must be... Uh, they've already gone through uh, a testing uh, phase. So it's not like, you know, I'm the first uh, guy to ever look at these maps. So if they're the finalists, I'm going to make the assumption they're at least decent. I'm also making the assumption, though, you could actually find them in-game. I, <laughs> I don't know what, what that's all about, but... Uh, okay, so let's see. Ramp over here. Jump up pad right over there. A little high ground here for an overlord, but I believe that a marine over there and a marine over there would provide enough vision to snipe that one. So I obviously play Zerk, right? So I look at a lot of these maps maybe from a bit of a Zerk-centered view, but... They've not been giving overlord uh, pillars a lot of love lately over the last couple of map pools that we've had. Okay, so third base, third base. And then you're suddenly next door neighbors already because these are all for the other player. So you turn into next door neighbors very quickly. Okay, so this is a low ground area entirely. Which is kind of interesting. Ah, it looks good though. I like the look at this map. Even though I'm not a huge fan of the um, of the rush category necessarily, at least for playing, this looks like it's got a lot of potential for sure. So you notice, like, uh, oh, you notice how like this map, at least compared to the previous one, like this one has all that dead space in the middle, right over here. This one, this one doesn't have that, you know? Like, there's a little bit of dead space, obviously. But, it's very narrow. You're basically just right next... Actually, no, it's not even like that. It's like that. Anyways, um, you're basically... Uh, you're, you're, you're basically right next to each other the entire time, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I like this map the most, I think, from the rush category so far. 
Um, I'm gonna give what's it called? Araholm. Araholm. Anyways, I've never. As long as it's not Jagannatha, I'm good. Okay, this one is gonna get an 8.5 out of 10 so far. I like this one the most so far here. And then we have a map called Babylon, which you know colors. Okay, that's very colorful. I was gonna say it looks. Good. This looks like a I don't know a pile of marbles right over here in the middle. Anyways, um, this map is made by Sha. Also, does not ring a bell. We have a couple of new competitors, I'm pretty sure, that are making these maps. I might be mistaken by one or two of them, but... This is a fairly small map with standardized expansion pattern that features four cliffs. Okay. Four cliff levels, that is. The reason why I think this map belongs to the rush category, even though it has four cliff levels besides short rush distance, is because it features a linear third base, relatively open on the low ground. While the triangle third attack pad would be straightforward and short if the rocks are taken down. Okay. So, let's have a look. Uh, that's not it. Is this Photoshop being Photoshop again? Sometimes Photoshop does this. I, I can't quite figure out why. Even though I've literally done the exact same thing now. A bunch of times in a row. Sometimes it doesn't want to do the thing. Give me one sec. I'll have to save the file and then load it in manually. This one has a full vibe. You mean autumn? Ah, right, fine. Okay. Actually, a lot of these maps do have some more uh, autumny or fally kind of color schemes. It's kind of interesting considering the time of the year. Um, let's see. So, okay, I think that's a jump up pad right over there. It's a little hard to see, but I think that is. Okay. Base over here, base over there, base over there. Bunch of dead space again in the center, which is not necessarily bad, by the way. But I do like having a little bit of tension there on smaller maps. Is that the way? No, 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 you go like that. Okay, sorry. So that's the path. This definitely seems a lot bigger than the previous ones. So he's talking about the rocks at the fourth? Did I get that correct? Destroying the destructible rocks will easily shorten the travel time of your attacks and also makes them quite straightforward towards the opposing enemy's expansions. Okay. Um, so that's these rocks, I believe. Yeah, this is in the rush category. I like this one quite a bit. But I don't know why it's in the rush category, because it seems way bigger. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, two, four, six, seven. Okay, so seven per... Per player. It's rush-ish. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if it belongs in this category, but it looks pretty good. So this one is called Babylon, which I do think is a pretty cool looking name. I'm gonna give this one an 8 out of 10 as well. I like I like Arrow Home the most from this category. Yeah. Just seems good. Okay, we're gonna get to the spicier categories, by the way, in a little bit. Freestyle is usually the most popular one. I'm probably gonna give high marks for that, assuming it's good. Next up, Macro. A map that favors defensive play and encourages players to reach endgame unit compositions. 38 to 43 seconds. Playable map dimensions are pretty big. Okay, so first off, we have Grasvan. Grasvan? Gr what is the map name? What does that mean? Grasvan. A planet that was nearly destroyed a thousand years ago? Is this from like an anime? Kubera Volume 3. I need I need some professional uh, anime viewers in the in the chat to tell me what this is a reference to. Grezvan? I don't think it's got anything to do with a van. No, I don't I don't think so. Anyways, this map is made by Legon. Legan. 
Uh, the map does ring a bell, but I don't remember exactly where else I have heard it before. Well, probably Middle Map Maker, but... Sometimes they do rename maps. Yeah, so in the previous... Um... <laughs> Actually, in the previous Team Liquid map contest, we had a map called Frost Giant. And Frost Giant got renamed to Inside and Out. Yeah, I just uh, talked about that game. Anyways, um, macro map with the rake layout of 16 bases. There are forward bases between the usual third base locations. Okay, because the third base opens towards the side and creates a cliff towards the middle. You truck to the ramp near a triangular base are supposed to limit where first attack goes. Okay, line of sight blockers. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh, love the colors. Love the patterns. Is Photoshop going to be cooperative? It is. Magical. Wait, no. It's not. Now it is. Okay. Interesting. Overlord pillar. Okay. Main base. Ramp for the Reaper. Natural. Oh, no. Natural. This looks like a white choke, but I'm going to make the assumption it is similarly sized to the regular ramps, because otherwise it would be, or they would make it. Third base. Third base. And then another optional third base right over here. That's kind of cool. That one's very far forward, but maybe with, like, some build order, she can pull that off. This base over here seems very dipped away. There's rocks, though, that would make it more attackable. Rush distance to the other side of the map would probably be something like this. Maybe? Probably. Yeah, I think so. So it's not like that. I like this. Yeah, this looks great. Yeah, visually it looks nice. And setup-wise, I also like it. Middle section. There's some side blockers over here. Okay. Nothing too spicy going on there, but I don't mind that. A lot of bases, though. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Yeah. So 16 in total. Ah, that's exactly the reason why Frost Giant is not the actual map name that they went with. It even had a bit uh, a burning building on the. Anyway, I don't want to get into that, but yeah, this map looks great. I really like it. Maybe not silver wall levels of great, but an eight out of five, I would say. So this is Macro Grass Van. I don't like the name. It would be a nine out of ten if it just had a good name. Sorry, sorry, I hate to break it. I don't like... Look, I just gotta imagine I'm casting a million games. And imagine I'm introducing a player on a map called... Babylon. That's that's a cool name, right? Silver Wool. I can work with that. Grass fan, I'm just wondering the entire time. Am I mispronouncing it? Am I doing something wrong? Yeah, that's what it was, Mutlesses. Anyways, Black Engine by Depressed One. Depressed One, he made a sick map last Liquid P or last, um, he made a sick one for the last Team Liquid map contest. I really liked it, but it didn't do well for some reason. Black Engine is a five level macro map. Okay, we've never had a map with five layers. Um, in multiplayer before. So we always had three layers. That's the standard. So like a main high ground, one layer lower, then one lower, then that. And now we have some maps with like four. Tropical Sacrifice, for example, has four layers. So this is a five layer one, which allows you to have a split decision on what you want to take as a third. Okay, fifth level was introduced as experimental part of design, but it looks natural not only for base, but also for the army movements. Okay. The map is relatively medium-sized. Relatively medium-sized, huh? 
The area of the main base is a little small for Terran, but it's been done on purpose. In exchange, we have a bigger area in the natural. Okay, you know what? Depressed one, I like I like what you're doing, dude. He came up with some really clever rock designs and stuff in the previous TOMC. Okay, once again, give me a sec. Sometimes Photoshop does this thing. I think, though, um, maps with, like, a lot of layers to it usually do favor more defensive play. So that's always something to keep in mind, I guess. God, I love the scratches on the map. Like, you see, like it looks like... Yeah, very cool. Very cool pattern. Anyways. Um, maps really have gotten very pretty. Like, if you compare it to what we saw earlier... Sorry to pull this one up. But this kind of reminds me of how we made maps in 2013. Which is not, like, as far as style set goes, right? But everything's just green. Everything, And then you have this. This is sick, man. Also, I'm a bit of a sucker for, like, the the red and black color scheme. It looks cool, but... Anyways, um... I think this is a jump up pad right over here. So this is the high ground. Then there's a layer over here, another layer over there, and then another layer all the way in the corner. Dude, there are so many high grounds on this map. Oh my god, okay. You go from there to there. I don't think the main base is too small. Maybe a little small, but... Medium size is probably uh, <laughs> an accurate description. So that's again on the high ground. Yeah, interesting, okay. So this middle section is all open. It's kind of hard to see the direction of these ramps. I think I'm gonna load this one up in game. So it's called Black Engine. Is it just not working? Or like, am I doing something wrong? I would imagine I know how to... Huh? Generally, you can find them pretty easily. Like, if these are the finalists, you would imagine that finding the maps is probably not a... A bad idea, right? Okay, there it is. TOMC demo. We're gonna spawn Protals this time. Do we have an Escher map? <laughs> that would be sick. There are actually some really cool map mechanics that we've never had in competitive play. For example, there's a map mechanic um, that's essentially a water slide. Where you have, like, say, a water slide going from the main base to like the fourth and you can go down the water slide but you either can't go up or only very slowly which is kind of cool like a, a one way directional water slide type it's kind of I like the idea of it okay this map is actually kind of bright which I think is pretty sweet so this is layer two then over here we have layer three Layer four. So is the middle... Wait, what? How is it five layers? It needs to go down one lower than this, no? So this... That's once again four? I'm counting only four layers. One layer, two layer, three layer, four layer. Maybe this is again an old version of the map. Yeah, this was only announced today, so maybe they haven't gotten around to updating the most recent things yet. This doesn't go down. Maybe in the middle? No? Middle is the same height as right over here. 
Ooh. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Maybe this is slightly different, though. Maybe this is not the most up-to-date version of the map. Anyways, uh, assuming it is as described, this map looks excellent. Black Engine. 9 out of 10. Feeling generous. Royal Blood. Once again, Milo on fire. I just remembered my cat is still here. <laughs> my cat is... Well, this is Toby. The other cat is called Milo, which always throws me off a little bit. Um, despite a short rush distance, this map provides a lot of safety early on by restricting movement of armies and allowing players to expand away from the main attack path. Bases are spread horizontally and become harder to defend the longer the game goes on. Okay. Interesting. So what's it called? Royal Blood. Okay then. Cat is napping right now, guys. I don't think he's realized that it's uh, it's it's getting dark yet. This <laughs> the amount of lights I have in this room are very significant. Generally, cats become active when it's sunrun, right? But uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been sunset for a while. Or, well, the sun set some time ago. Is that a pile of gold? This is a Max Pax themed map. <laughs> Alright. Main base. Natural. You know the drill. Jump up pad right over there. Overlord path. Overlord. Okay. Golden minerals. Okay, now these are interesting because you could mine them from the back and from the front. This map looks really nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Phew, that's a lot. Okay, so units would go through the center like this. So it definitely has a quick rush distance. Third base seems pretty protectable. Yeah. No, this looks really nice. I like the look of this. I like those golden minerals over there too. Can get some spicy games going because of it. Really nukes. Uh, yeah, this looks great. Royal Blood. Another 9 out of 10. I were looking at the finalists of the Team Liquid map contest, which usually determines what the next map pool is going to be like, Loannis. So these finalists just got announced today. And, um... Yeah. Because of that, I'm going over them real quick. Well, real quick. <laughs> so it says a short rush distance, yet it is under the macro category, and I guess that's because of the amount of bases that it's got. Okay, Electron by Agaton. A larger map with baby chokes and shortcuts to keep players on their toes. Is this a rhyme? The linear third expansions nicely, tucked in but has a high ground... Okay, no, no, no. I, th I thought we had a tempo going here. Um, <laughs> The triangular third has several entry points. But okay. Dude, there's a lot of choking going on here on Agaton, huh? Or on Electron Rotter. Anyways. Let's see. A lot of tight choke points. Golden base? I mean, the background is anyways. What does it say? It says something over there. Anyways, jump up pad right over there. Jump up pad right over here, too. That's kind of cool. So, if you want to get your Reaper Scout in against a Roach Push or something cheeky with Dark Templar, should be manageable. Okay, wall off over there. Massive main base, by the way.
Yeah, this base is going to be very hard to protect. Siege tanks over here. Don't mess around. Probably says caution. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. So this ramp goes down. This ramp goes down. It looks... Yeah, it, if you look at it too long, it looks weird. But it's definitely going down. This one is also going down. If it goes up, it gets really strange. <laughs> okay. So you have two third base options. Yeah, this is a wonderful siege tank location right over there. Can get a nice little tempo lead on this map for sure. Something like that? No, probably like this. Okay, this looks pretty good. I'm not exactly sure about the bridge situation over here, though. I feel like that is going to be really nice to defend. Then again, there are a lot of entrances into this base. But assuming you have this section of the map taken, right? This base is not really accessible from that angle as easily. These two bridges are very narrow. This section over here... Like, all of these lead over in that direction, right? You could engage this. But I've got a feeling that a, a, a couple of well-positioned units over here behind, like, a wall or a bunch of stuff. Like, it's going to be very difficult to break. Yeah, it's got a lot of narrow paths, right? I think it's probably a little too narrow. There's rocks over here as well. So once these rocks are down, this becomes, like, another... And watchtowers in the middle? Not a huge fan. I think those are watchtowers. <clears throat> it could be an interesting map, and I wouldn't mind playing on it. But I think this one is my least favorite so far in this list of macro maps. So this one is called Electron. I'm going to give this one a 7.5 out of 10 because it does look nice. Yeah, it could make for some fun games for sure. But it's made, by the way, by Agaton, who I've not brought up yet because it doesn't... Oh, no, he did make a bunch of maps. Yeah, Hardwire is made by Agaton. Hardwire was obviously an excellent game, uh, an excellent map, also with a lot of tight choke points. So maybe Agaton is just really into the choke points. I think I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. Obviously, initial impression, so I might, I might be, you know, thinking of this differently if I were to play a couple games on them. But Hardwire was fantastic, yeah. It's named Electron because it's good for Proton players. That's what I like about electrons and protons, man. They bond together a lot, right? Anyways, um, this is the map category that I am most interested in. Even though this is usually not the map category that we get too many maps of in the actual map pool. Freestyle. This map basically just allows you to do whatever you like. Atypical usage of backdoor entrances with mineral walls, reduced mineral patches. Actually, they've become more popular. They've become more popular, so... The first one is called Altitude by Character R. A macro map with a bit of a twist. Rich bases in the center are blocked by destructible Zelnaga Towers, leaving three options. Destructible Zelnaga Towers? Destroy the tower to gain access to the rich minerals or keep it from your opponent. Use the Watchtower. Long distance mine the rich base at the risk of toppling towers. Wait, what? Uh, okay, we're gonna definitely have to load this one up. That's a my god, dude. It's like a landing strip for Reapers. <laughs> Wait, no, okay, that's a corner base. I was gonna say, I thought this was the main base. It had like two landing strips for a Reaper to arrive in. No, 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 this is the main base right over here. Um, natural. Third. Third. That looks pretty normal. There's more bases out there. More bases that way. More bases that way. That's a lot of bases already. What is going on in the center bit of this game? I have no clue. Oh, so there's watch... Okay, okay, hold up. I think I understand what's going on. So it's called Altitude. Altitude. Uh, 
Let's have a look. So, I think the rocks are covering the golden minerals. If you destroy them. I don't know exactly how that lines up with the watchtower. But let's go have a look. <laughs> what? Okay, I... Okay, you guys mine. We need 400 minerals. Huh? Why would you want to mine this though? If it is always gonna be forced into a... A base that's out of position. So if you knock down the cooling tower... If you... <laughs> we'll have to address this in a moment. If you knock down the cooling tower, it destroys the Zelnaga tower. And after it's been crushed, I think if you then destroy the rocks that are tumbled down... It doesn't do you much good. However, if I plant down a Nexus over here, no, no, okay, I like the idea if this was like further back. Like, what's the point of this base? Why would I want to try and mine the gold minerals? Sure, there's eight mineral patches, but I'm going to need two Nexi to even... Like, it's not even going to fit two side by side. I like the theory, but it does not make sense in execution. Oh, I guess what you could do is knock down the rocks. Then destroy the rocks. And then suddenly you can mine an 8 golden mineral field base. It's only 400... Or sorry, it's only 500 HP. I thought this was going to be like your standard... Heh? That's not a lot. Okay, maybe it's not that bad, but it would slow it down really quick. If we're gonna take it, like, if we're gonna make this base that difficult to acquire, though, I feel like it also needs, like, a high-yield gas. Or even, like, 10 mineral fields or something. I got a little confused here by the early game. Okay, so it still has three armor. But you can actually snipe it pretty easy. I'm assuming those rocks, though, are gonna be 2,000 HP that it drops, right? So I'm assuming also the Protoss probe here will, uh, the probe right here will get crushed. Oh? No. This one also has 500. I thought it was going to be 2,000. So it's 503 armor. I thought it was going to be 2,000 HP. Probably as lifts, by the way. Hmm... Hmm... <clears throat> I think I would like it better if this was also a high yield gas. Like, if we're gonna have to get a crazy game going, I feel like a high yield gas to double down on it would be nice. A single gas geister does not make it as worthwhile. If it had a second gas, it would also be fine. But like, a single gas, like what are you gonna do with all those minerals? I like the idea, but I'm not 100% sold on it yet. Anyways, what's happening here in the center? Because it's underwater? Okay. It's, ju <laughs> it's just underwater. There's a little ice hockey ring right over here. That's nice. And then uh, right behind the ice wall, we have the same thing happening over there too. Hmm. I want to like this real bad, but it all looks a little unrefined to me. Like this line over here, these like tight chokes or, or like these, these tight corners over here, this like center bit. I'm not 100% sold in this situation either, but at least, you know, this is kind of cool.
This is by far the most interesting part of this map. And I think that's kind of nice. But I think it could be better executed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... It just doesn't seem too refined to me, especially with like those patterns and stuff. Yeah, it's it's a good attempt. It's a good attempt, but I, I, I yeah, I don't know. Although I would love to cast a bunch of games on this map. So the map is called Altitude. I'm gonna give it a. A 6.5, a 6 out of 10 currently. May, okay, fine. A 7 out of 10 currently. Potentially a 9 out of 10. With a little bit more refinement. I, it's it's not quite there yet. I'm No, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. No, I'm going to knock it down. It doesn't look horrible. But it doesn't look great. Uh, it looks like it's... Wait, no. This is different again. Heh. Huh? Why are the final, like, why are there seven versions of some maps and then, like, not the... There, the, the ring is not in the middle here. I'm again looking at an old version. Nah, it's a bit of a shame. Anyways, I, yeah, I, I'm... It's, it's good, but, like... Bit shaky. I feel like as one of the seven exclusive ladder maps, altitude would be a yeah, a little bit more clean than than anyways. Hyper one with Lazarus wastes. Oh, all the map makers are getting to the chat now. What's up, guys? Welcome. Hyper one is in the chat right now, so uh, you know. It's time to rip off the bandaid. Wait, no, 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 no. All right, let's see. The central terrain is inspired by Dreamcatcher. Techs cannot siege behind a cliff such that they can attack either third base except near the entrance of the base. The first four bases for each player are standard, but the remaining three bases have two extra mineral patches. Ten patches in total. Okay. To balance the ability to take these bases, especially considering the rate at which the different races expand, they are slightly distant and blocked by debris, which must be cleared prior to taking them. If a player do not wish to interact with the blocked expansions, they can simply play off the first four bases. Brief analysis. Compared to a standard 8-patch base, a 10-patch base supersaturated has no objective downsides. Compared to a 6-base, blah, 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 a 10-patch base supersaturated provides more total resources and... Okay, I think it's boosts. 14% higher income at full saturation. However, the rich base provides 40% more income per worker and can be saturated more quickly. Okay, they've done the math. Let's see. Lazarus Wastes. First off, pretty good na ma map name. Yeah, I'm not bothered by the name. Again, it's no Jagannatha. Oh, it is Boasts? It boasts more income? I guess that's fine too, yeah. Yeah, you know what, that would work. Okay. Main base. Reaper jump up pad. Fair enough. No overlord pillar over here, I don't think. But I guess you have these locations over here that are actually super sick for overlords. We have like an old Protoss base in the bottom left. And a similar... Protoss base in the top right with like a wasteland in the middle, which graphically I think is really sick. Okay, third base, third base. So these, oh my god, that looks so cursed. <laughs> yeah, that looks weird. Am I crazy? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, t okay, no, 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 I'm good. Uh, 10 mineral fields. Uh, oh, you can actually go across here. Interesting. Wait, what? So you can have... Hmm. 
You can have literally like 50 something of your workers mining two bases. I almost feel like it should have three gases too, yeah. <laughs> I always feel like it should have three gases, but maybe maybe that's a little much. That is kind of cool. I actually like this. Somehow that's so basic, and yet no one's ever really tried it before with 10 mineral fields, as far as I know, anyways. Yeah, you can play you can play 50 workers here. So three per gas, 20 per base. So that would be 26. You can play 52 workers here, right? It's not bad. Wait, there's more? Wait, what? How many bases are there? These one also have 10. So these have 10. These have 10. These have 10. This one's normal. And I'm assuming it's mirrored on the other side of the map too. So these are also 10 each. I actually really quite like the center bit too, by the way. It's different than what we normally see. It doesn't have all those divots and high grounds and low grounds and stuff, but I actually think this... Oh, I actually think this has a lot of potential. Uh, map looks absolutely ginormous. So the actual rush distance is really not that long. Or sorry, it's it like it looks... It looks like it would take forever to get to the other side of the map, but you can just go straight through the center. In a way, like, these heavy mineral bases, they kind of, yeah, they kind of discourage turtle play, right? So even though theoretically you could sit on four bases here, you would probably expend towards this one if you're like a Terran player, right? Or a Protoss player. But you're going to get Bane Link out of your mind on these bases. Like, there's going to be so many Bane Link roll bys. I like this map. I actually think the center part is actually maybe even more interesting than the rest. Lazarus Wastes. Yep, this one's this one looks sick. Lazarus Wastes. Gonna give it a 9 out of 10. Not just because you're in the chat, Hyper One. Just to clarify, I actually genuinely think it looks good. Again, I haven't played any games on any of these maps, but it looks really nice. <laughs> Alright, next up. Titalica? Titalica? Dude, why? What is with all these anime references? Titalika is one of the planets in the Webtoon universe. Ah. Uh. Uh. Okay. Well, you know what? You guys know my feelings on maps that have weird names. Lazarus wastes. Isn't Lazarus the guy from the Bible who turned like a thousand years old? Anyways, I don't... <laughs> Are you saying that was a bit of a waste? Is that what you... <laughs> I'm not sure what the reference is to, but... This is like Metallica's cousin. Yeah, Titelica. Taitelica? Taitalika? That's Methuselah Loco? Oh, okay, I was close. Lazarus is the singular form of laser? Oh. oh, it's the revived guy. So you're saying that is a bit of a waste. I see. No, okay, fine. I'm assuming it's the singular form of laser. Look, I'm lying. It's not. Wait, what is Lazarus? I actually want to know now. <laughs> well, I, I googled Lazarus. The only thing that pops up is the biblical person. That, I... Yeah, I can't find much else. It apparently also means being incredibly drunk. I, I, I'm not sure. I guess we have a little bit of Lazarus references in StarCraft, though. Oh yeah, there's the Lazarus Project in Mass Effect. That's true. The Revival Project. Right. There's an Archbishop in Diablo called Lazarus. 
Lazarus is definitely not the singular form of laser, though, guys. That was a troll. Well trolled, because I believed you for a moment. <laughs> One Lazarus, two laser. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, you, can, you can make me believe anything. I'm very gullible, apparently. All right, anyways. Um, Got to get to an 8.5 at this rate for Lazarus Wastes. Titalik, okay, I don't, I don't know the map name anyways, but aggressive map with an unusual layout of 16 bases, rush distance is only 33 seconds, and usual thirds have been very, okay. However, natural has minerals blocked 30 backdoor ramp that leads to, okay, the pocket has another blocked 15 mineral ramp towards the rest of the map. Ooh, you know what? Kind of looked like a candy shop when it wasn't zoomed in. Maybe it's not so bad. <sighs> Let's see. Ooh, this is like an old school main base. Kind of getting that vibe anyways. Jump up pad for a Reaper over here. Ramp over there. Ooh. So this one over here is kind of interesting. A couple of mineral fields here in the back. So these had 15. These have 30 is what it said, right? Another jump up location there. So the main and the natural seem absolutely gigantic. Also, I think the textures aren't fairness over here, but anyways. Um, these bases seem huge, and these seem tiny. Oh, it was the other way around? So wait, these are 15 minerals, and these are 30? Okay, okay, I see. Interesting. So you'd need six trips to mine this one out. Assuming you have a base over here, that's going to be quite a few trips because that's a lot of distance actually from there to there, from there to there, from there to there, from there to there. It's going to take a while. So I think a lot of, especially Zorks, would opt for that one. So why would you ever take this one? Um... Not too keen on this idea over here. This this over here is just a little... I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. It could play out really nicely, but... It's really difficult, though, to mine out these little mineral fields over here. Yeah, that's actually true, man. The distance... That's... Hmm. So, the distance from this third base to that third base is very short. Oh, sorry. But if you go from this third base all the way to the other side, it's incredibly distant. Or I don't know if, even how you would go. Probably like that. It could play out, again, really cool. Not as cool as this map from earlier. I feel like this map has a lot more craziness potential than this one. Um... But I've got a feeling that the size of the main base in a natural, and then the way that, like, Zerk will always take this as their third base, and Terrans and Protosses will probably be kind of forced to take this one, but then they're awkwardly sitting in this little corner of the map. And then, like, how are you going to leverage yourself to a fourth? I guess you'd mine out these and mine... Yeah, take that base? But then you're really far away. Like, by the time that, like, Terran Protoss... Sorry, by the time that Terran and Protoss would have their quadrant of the map taken, like this section, Zerk would have all of this. <laughs> Zerk would be all over the map. This is also very, very horizontal. So these five bases are the most logical ones that I think you would probably try to take if you're more turtly. And you're basically just in the bottom 20% of the map. I, I'm not I'm not a big fan of this. Plus the map name. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't. I'm going to give this one a 6 out of... Nah, okay, fine. Yeah, 6 out of 10. Sorry, sorry. 
Okay, wait, that was it? Oh, we did all of them? I think we did all of them, guys. I think we've finished looking all of the maps. Okay, so the best ones, in my opinion, for each of the categories, and I'll pull up every nine. Let's go to the very top. I think in the standard category, my favorite one here is Silver Wool. We'll go over that one in just a moment, just to review. In the Rush category, I really liked Arrowhome. Most of these others were also really good, but yeah. Uh, in Macro Map, which is usually my favorite category other than the crazy one, uh, I liked Black Engine, looked great, and Royal Blood. I think Royal Blood looked really cool too. And then for Freestyle, I was a big fan of Lazarus Wastes. Although the longer I think about the name, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> no, okay, fine. Uh, so this map, to clarify, for those of you that didn't like watch the whole thing, we found out that like even though it looks like these are crossings over here, these are actually covered with rocks now. So we have... Initially, at the beginning of the game, you would only have access to the center access way, so you can just go through the center without being blocked. However, as the map progresses and rocks get destroyed, all of these other paths open up. So initially you have only one attack path, but by the end you could technically have like units running all over the map. Which in theory sounds really good. Obviously you could protect it pretty easily too with siege units. But yeah, this seems like a map that would create a lot of dynamic gameplay. Which I'm a fan of. Arrow Home. This map seemed pretty straightforward, nothing all too crazy on it. Just looked like a solid map overall. Um, it is, I don't think, the quickest rush distance from natural to natural, which I kind of liked. Nothing all too wild in this map, though, but, um, yeah, just a solid, straightforward game. I think it's good. Uh, Black Engine. We couldn't find the most up-to-date version of this map in the actual game, so that's a bit tricky. But maybe that's because I did something wrong or because, I don't know, this only got announced today. So, apparently it has five layers. So, rather than like three layers, which we normally see, it's got five. Really like the overall layout though, and it yeah, looks like this would create a lot of interesting play. I think this is probably a low ground right over here. So it's a bit funky to see on this screenshot, but I think this probably has like another layer. So even though there's a lot of bases to acquire, the further you go out, the more dangerous it is to take them, because you can get siege pretty easily from the high ground, which sounds really good. Royal Blood. Yeah, this map just seemed good. I really like the random golden minerals in the bottom right and the top left. Normally wouldn't like that too much, but I think it works out well here. So standard for the most part, but some cheeky golden minerals in the top left and the bottom right. Plus a cool tile set. And a Lazarus Wastes. With the 10 mineral fields. For three bases for each player. I actually think this is probably the most interesting map. I don't know if it's the best. But I think this one has a lot of potential as far as like standard gameplay goes. Because you can take this, these four bases easy peasy and play a normal game. But it comes at the risk of letting your opponent macro. And I've got a feeling it's going to be really interesting to see how players would try to hold on to those outer bases. Because obviously if you invest too much into taking those outer bases... Your main is going to get destroyed. But I wouldn't be surprised if at some point, right, there's going to be some sort of epic four-player... Or sorry, like four-base, one-versus-one happening. And then at some point, it's some sort of crazy base race. And suddenly, people are forced to take the corners instead. You could almost start like a second one-versus-one -one on one map. You see what I mean? Like, you could take these four bases on both sides of the map. And then play still a full game off of the other bases that are left over. Yeah, they feel incredibly far away. But not, not inaccessible. I think a lot of Zerks will be able to take them pretty easy. Darren and Protoss after taking these fours. Or these four. You could move over there. It might end up being a little Zerk favorite though. Because because it is so far away. I can almost already envision the Banelings rolling into the planetary here. <laughs> Loco for it's one singular laser giraffe. But two Lazarus giraffes. No I think it's the other way around. I thought we established the singular for laser, which is totally not an abbreviation, by the way, uh, is, is Lazarus. So it's one Lazarus giraffe and two laser giraffes.
No? I think the plural would come out of the second word. No. Anyway, uh, anyways, it's okay. Yeah, so certainly a lot of potential here. I, um... I like, I like most of these maps, actually. Like, overall, even though I have given some of them not the best rating, I don't think any of these look particularly bad. I think Altitude probably won't get too far. Titalica, Titalica, Taitalica, Taitalica, I don't know. Um, yeah, these, these were not my personal favorites, but they could still be totally okay. Yeah, laser is an acronym. I know, I know. Overall, you can basically pick and choose any of them. I didn't like Electron as much, but that's mostly compared to the others. Tetelica seems broken for Terran if you float your third to the bottom base. <laughs> yeah, but you'd lose so much in the process. Like, now you're stuck on one base. <laughs> okay, so for me personally, I think... Lazarus Wastes and Silver Wool are the most interesting ones. Those will be the ones that I'll remember past today. Everything else I'll forget about until eventually at some point uh, they'll announce a new map pool and then I'll have to like research some of my notes. But as far as the initial impressions go, yep, I like most of these quite a bit. All right. I think that about sums it up, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed hanging out here today. I am gonna be wrapping it up. For those of you just now tuning in, I stream every Friday right now on YouTube. I'm gonna be doing so for at least a little bit longer. As long as I can keep up with, or as long as I can come up with some interesting themes for every uh, every Friday. Uh, you'll remember Altitude. Yeah, Altitude was an interesting map for sure with the water and everything. Oh, hey buddy. Can you hear him? Oh, okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. <sighs> I don't know if you could hear him uh, meowing at the door. He's recently figured out that there seems to be a direct correlation between the human and the door opening. This is mind-boggling, okay? So basically what you do is you paw at the corner of the door, and if that doesn't trigger the human, you make noise. He's about a year and... Three months old. It's taken him a while to figure that out. But uh, yeah, very smart cat. Very, very smart cat. Anyways, guys, I'm going to be wrapping it up here today. Hope you enjoyed hanging out. I'll be back again on Friday next week if everything goes according to plan. And uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun. Hope to see you again. I, of course, have videos going up as well this weekend. So if you are interested, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you made it all the way until the end of the stream... Maybe on the end of this video as well. Please take the one second that it takes to hit the like button. It really does help. Okay, but for now, stay awesome. Thanks for the support. Have a great start of your weekend. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you next week. Well, I'll probably see you tomorrow for a new video and stuff. But I'll see you next week on YouTube with another live stream, uh, with another live stream once again. <laughs>